If love and gogi is wrong, I don't want to be right. What would Socrates say to that? It tickles my face. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Goosies. I don't care. Oof. You got Marcos. That's not. No, that's not. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. You do got me. Get over here, Marcos. Don't look at Hope it in Leroy, ready to deploy. Had a hit it with a little girl, Elizabeth. That was a decoy. Better have about me, boy. Okay. Leroy ain't told me. Hold to the show, man. Still to the song for the show, and Till then, his hat won't open. Sometimes go taste like a snowman. No proof I'm a lie about a mode, and no proof. Like, I always wanted him. I never hated him. I never traded him. I never did. I never traded him. You know what? What is a star? Like, under the city, the driver's side flies. Which is a large, so many more. Ten in the more. Never a bar. Hey, ten in the more. Two to the pig. Nothing to you but a second. <laughs> This one time for the Twitch. This one time for the text. This one time for the phone line. Whole time, wonder what they gonna do next. You know, I I just wish you guys would stop the quibbling. Tobin the Leroy Show here on AM five sixty Sports <laughs> UAM. I'm Alex Dono in for Tobin today. And we can tell. We can tell Dono's in because you- we have done private chat more before the show than we usually do in the first hour. Well, I've learned a lot from this private chat. Like, I found out, like, Leroy, your your family is leaving for Paris today without you. Apparently, you have no desire to go on no. vacation to France. So That's I, not I, I a vacation. Listen, and, and I'm going to say this as nice as I can say it. <clears throat> I spent 55 years trying to make it as a black man here. I'm not going and chance it in another country. How can, is that, is that eloquent enough? Yeah, it makes sense. And, 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 and I guess growing up in New Orleans and, and then going up to Michigan was a change for me. Right. Cause yeah. it, it's just the South and the North is just totally different as far as that is. Right. But going to different countries, yeah, man, uh, I'm I'm terrified of that because, listen, contrary to popular belief, every country got black people. They may Correct. not be black, but you know what the hell I'm talking about. And and I don't and I ain't, yeah, it scares the hell out of me. I I don't know about you know just from just growing up, it's terrifying to me. So I know that, you know, that would probably be on somebody's bucket list. And I see athletes traveling all over the world and all that stuff. Great. Good for them. I'm well, good. Like I, was, I was telling you in the private chat. I mean, they've uh, I, I feel like uh, the croissants at Costco are That's like on, right. par, <laughs> on par, if not better than the ones you get in Paris, not to mention. We got Eiffel Towers all over the states. You can go to Las Vegas. They got, I think that's like a full size Eiffel Tower. They got one at Epcot. Like, there's you're not missing a whole lot over here. Yeah. Well, and, and I guess you know, well, it's different when your wife speaks French. Oh, there you go. They get the whole the Canadian French connection. <laughs> yeah. So and and you know, my she's been trying to teach my daughter so. And that's when my daughter wanted for a sweet 16. I didn't realize until after that the party would have been cheaper. <laughs> yeah, one of those MTV super I, sweet 16 I, said, I, I damn near could have got Rihanna to come perform. <laughs> <laughs> just, hey, Riri, just come sing one song. One song. Right? <laughs> Plus, like I can't. I mean, damn, it cost you a grip. That you leave. Yeah. <laughs> one song, I'm thinking one song. just one song is probably going to cost you at least six figures. Yeah, well, you get or her. You might to. have her sing a whole like album if you get her down here. I hey, don't know, it's um too much on one song, and they're going for eleven days. Wow, not bad. Yeah, yeah. Now I will say this: that. <laughs> french fries I, I love french fries too well and the other thing about like i obviously can't speak to the whole the whole black thing with going to france but i've been to france before and i get the general feeling as an american that they do not want us there like there, there's a lot of, yeah. like there's like you go to you go to italy and i am like i'm i'm kind of italian like i'm a dual citizen i i speak a lot of italian with but they still i get the sense over there 
that they they really want tourists and they appreciate the Americans in France. I feel like they'd rather just not have us there. Yeah, I I, I can see it. You know, you know what? I can see it, and I'm American. Yeah. Right. I I could, I could just see it, and, and it's not like people just think think differently here. Like you you think. There's a lot of people here in the states that think they're owed something, right? Right? That you 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 supposed to get this, and and when you pay for this, you like yeah, man. Like so, like and and, and there's too many people in this con- in this world that just don't like you because of that, and it might not even be you, and and it's it's unfortunate, right? Um, but that's just the realities that we live in. And, and, um, I try not to have my fears or, or my reservations about going, you know, elsewhere hinder that of my family. Cause that's a me issue. My, my daughter don't know what it was like growing up in New Orleans, right. you know? So, so I can't, you know, and that, that's how we move forward. Right. That's how we move forward. We don't hold people responsible in the future for what happened to you in the past. Right. And so I try I try very hard. I try very hard not to, you know, hold that against everybody that I've come in contact with since I left New Orleans. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you, man. Uh I am a little bit disappointed today. Not in either of you. I love seeing Vlad. I love seeing Leroy. And Leroy's face looks completely different from the last time mm-hmm. I saw him. But I, I am disappointed that Marcos decided to take off today. Like, I guess he's like, Dono's hey. here. I don't want to be in the same building with Dono. And I'm saying this because I was listening to you guys on Monday. And I I was geeking out to when you did the spring break trivia. And I, I learned that Vlad, Vlad is the king of spring break. Because I think you got every <laughs> question right. When you guys were you guys were doing that MTV spring break trivia, and it took Absolutely. me it took me right back to the 1990s and early 2000s. Like I used to when I when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, when MTV was on spring break, when they were set up in Cancun and they were set up in Miami and apparently in Sunny Isles, I didn't realize they set up there at some point. Every day after school, I'd be watching that MTV spring break coverage. That brought me freaking back, man. I enjoyed that. Right. Well, this is spring. This is spring break week, so all the music that you were right. hearing is I like it during the spring break time. So so Dono and it's cool to have you on because it is <laughs> getting it's not only is it draft time but it's about that time for Kane's update. Practice. Yes sir. Oh, I've been practice. out there at every practice. So, and so and so from that standpoint for all our Kane's fans out there you know we can just catch up on what's been going on in in um at Kane's uh spring ball I want to ask you this though I propose a rule okay I propose a new rule for NIL okay I'm listening and here's what it is you know in the real life in real life you know, you can call it what you want, but in real life, when you accept money for a service, you provide that service as best of your abilities, right? Mm-hmm. That's how it works in the NFL. That's how it works in the NBA. That's how it works in baseball. So the one thing that I have a problem with the NIL is this. You can't take the money from the collectives. And then when it gets to the bowl game, you decide to sit out. Agreed. But here, but here's the loophole. They're technically they're not paying you to play games. They're paying you to like if it's a collective. Use your name, you, I, right? I, like I, like I, you you have to do like the personal appearances and the autograph I, signings I, and, I, and the I, little the chat the I, meet and greets and stuff. I get it. I get it. But you are setting. Um setting people up for these you know responsibilities we all know without you playing football there is no nil 
Exactly. Hey, if, if you're not if you're not playing games, then those meet and greets and the autograph signings are less valuable. So it I is. Would it also, is the I would also. I would also. Be very cautious to give somebody nil before they've played, because yeah. you come from all over the country. You ain't got no name, image, and likeness here, right? A kid coming from California. Now, I'm not talking about transfer portal guys that have played college football. But I'm talking about if you're a freshman coming in from California, nobody know who the hell you are. Where does your name, image, and likeness? Right. You, well, you, the, you don't have the, no name, and, and, image, and likeness and, until you like, do something the, for the Canes. The, the NCAA agrees with you because they, they've tried – to, they and screwed they, it they, up. You right, know what? Well, the thing is, like, but I, I don't, I don't know what they can do because, like, they, they've, they've tried to take like the N, the NIL as an inducement because everybody uses it, like, you know, collectives around the country. Right. It's like, hey, we want to land this recruit, so we're going to offer him an NIL deal, even though we haven't seen him play a snap of college right. ball. The, the NCAA tried to make that illegal, but Leroy, they have gotten their asses kicked in court repeatedly. Here's so, why. Here's why. Because for so long. The governing body of the NCAA didn't want this. And the only reason why it happened was because of a court in California. So once that happened, you can't then come back and try to govern it because nobody gives a damn what you say. You had a chance to regulate it and you wouldn't didn't want any part of it. So now that the courts took over, Right. Everybody's going to listen to the courts and not care about what the NCAA has to say. It's the NCAA's fault because they took too long to be a part of this. Right. Well, do you like um, Jay Billis, who seems very intelligent? He's very he, smart, by the way. He's very smart. Like he, he's proposed the idea that they players should become actual employees of schools and they, and they should actually get paid for play, which obviously you completely throw away any illusion that it's still an amateur sport, but we're kind of throwing that away anyway. Like would that, because what you talk about, Hey, you shouldn't get paid until you actually play. And you know, you shouldn't get paid anyway. If you're opting out of bowl games and stuff like, would that fix that model to actually make players employees of schools? It, it would, it would incentivize them to go out and perform. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, 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 and also it would eliminate a lot of the transfer portal because yeah. now you want to stick, you know, cause you got an NIL deal. Now you don't want to start that process over. Right. But, but here's, here's the problem with all of this, right? The problem with all of this is, is that now you have parents, uncles, uh, family friends who think that now their high school kids value is higher than what it is. Yeah. You, you see what I mean? Because I now you have kids going to two or three schools and don't never play college football because you ain't never stuck it out to get your opportunity to play. And when you think about Kane's football, you can think of, how many great players sat for two years because the team was so good? That's right. I sat for two years. I played a little bit. I lettered my second year, but I was a backup. Now, I didn't start played, playing consistently until my if, third if, year. If, if, you, if you played in this era, and no, it's so easy to transfer. Do you think you would have still sat for two years? Or if you played in this era, do you think you would have found somewhere where you could probably play quicker? I think it it has more to do with where I went to school, right? Because right. I think knowing the situation I went to in Michigan, when the whole room was five-star, we, we signed five five-star running right. backs. You, you knew that going in. Going in, yes. you knew I'm probably not going to play for two, three years. Well, I knew, I knew that I was going to have to compete for a job because yeah. that's just the way it was, right? Um. And but keep in mind, transferring wasn't an option back then. Exactly. So when you made that decision, you knew you were in for a dogfight just to get on the field. Um, but here's where it gets it really bothers me. The two kids on the Miami basketball team that were all everything, yeah, 
and played an entire season like blah. <laughs> and I would oh, I, name, yeah. name him Wuga Poplar. Yes, and and I would venture into saying this: when your pockets get fat, and you already assume you're gonna get drafted high. What is your incentive to play college basketball? Yeah, right. And that's the way that looked. And correct me if I'm wrong. And 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 the coach kind of hinted to that at the end of the season, right? That your two all-world players did not elevate. And so they went from possibly a first round pick to maybe undrafted. And all they're going to say is, well, I got my money. So you understand you're dealing with kids. And I don't blame them. Like you 18, 19 years old, you ain't never had no money. And then somebody put a couple hundred grand in your pocket. What, what, how are you supposed to, like, like, what are you supposed to do? Like, it's yeah. going, you got to learn how to deal with that too. Right. And and uh, I thought uh, I was listening to Joe this morning on the way in and I thought I thought he made a good point and I've thought about this a lot that you know the whole the transfer portal thing I know a lot of coaches don't like how easy it is to transfer for obvious reasons because you'll get players who just don't have the patience to stick it out and develop but it is also a two-way street that coaches can benefit from yeah. because th- th- there there's a lot of I know I know it happens in Miami and I know it happens all over the country there is a lot of nudging out the door right because you you have players that listen sometimes it's the player who decides I don't want to stick it out here or it's sometimes the coach they need a scholarship open and they figure and hey this guy is not play. what we thought this guy's not right. developed but he's not going to play so uh, I can nudge him out and I do something I can honestly say from experience covering Miami and covering this coaching staff They do a really good job helping players who are leaving, even facilitating players, finding other schools to play for. So they're I think they're more hands on with that process. Well, that's just a way to get their ass out quicker. Wait, come on. Who you true, fool? true. But it does it does help that. At least it's you're not like, leaving the guy out in the cold. It's like it's like you breaking up with your girl and you say, Look, I'm gonna set you up. I'm gonna get you an apartment <laughs> uh, or, or whatever, so you can go just do your own thing. That That sounds like a Vlad move. Vlad, have you ever done that? Have you ever, like, broken up with a girl? You're like, to make this transition really easy, I'm going to hook you up. No. (laughs) That that you still got to – no. You got to still keep that in the back pocket. Ah, fair. Come on, man. Good point. Good point. You can't do that. Never mind. mind. So, yeah, so I'm I'm interested to to hear about camp, about this quarterback, right? Um, I'm interested to see – you know who's gonna have a hell of a year is who's the quarterback that just left? Uh Van Dyke. Van Dyke. Because I don't know if he'll even start there. I'm not I'm not even sure really? if he's gonna start in Wisconsin. I, I mean, I don't think there. people realize the injury that he had was nasty. Yeah, sure. And and he's tried to play. And see, I hate this is the one thing I hate about sports, man. Players want to play, they play through injury. And But when you go on that field, I don't care how banged up you are. I don't care how much you're sucking it up. People don't care. Right. And so right. what happens is, and here's what happens, that it's unfortunate, but it happens. Guys say, I'm not playing until I'm 100%. Right? And, mm-hmm. and fans are mad. Why won't you give it a go? Why don't you give us 70%? Why won't you give us whatever you got? I say, because you don't appreciate that. You don't appreciate that as fans. You ain't going to give him no break if the dude can't plant on his left leg, but he's still trying to throw it because the muscle is not adhering to the skin. I mean, it, it apparently created a lot of interception problems for him. But we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk more <laughs> on the other side about. Yeah, what hey, hey, Vlad! He just tagged him on the way out. Bop, bop. Uh, one, two. Dude, you gotta understand something. You gotta understand something about certain fan bases. His signature move was the interception. And that's that's like, the thing. You know. Fan bases, they love you. They they will defend you. But once you leave or you take a shot at them, you say some remarks. Yeah. All the negative, all the warts that you had is going to be exposed. I'm just right. saying every quarterback needs a signature move. Tebow had that little jump pass. You know, Patrick Mahomes has the sidearm. Tyler Van Dyke, see? the interception. You see? You see? Like, wait, like wait, everybody wait, else wait, doesn't. Wait. Like, and, every and other bad quarterback doesn't throw in the Here's the amazing thing, Vlad. 
six months before that became his signature move, they were talking about him winning the Heisman. Oh, they loved him. They loved him. <laughs> if they made a Heisman for interceptions, he just won it. Uh, I bet uh, you prior he, to he the non he, he, he wouldn't ask James this. Winston. Let me James ask you Winston this, went 30 for 30. Let me, yeah, that's right. right. Let me ask you this, Leroy. Prior to the kneel down, the non kneel down, Tyler Van Dyke was good, right? Everything was great. Yeah, it was 4 0. Yeah, Everything yeah. was beautiful. He, he actually played really badly in that game. Kneel down or no kneel down. You know, had, had he thrown one less interception in that game, the kneel down would not have even been a factor. Right. Would not even been a factor. See how, look, right, we, got, we got Cam Ward now. See how, see, see, see how they do it? See how they do it? Next girl. Hey, hey, that's <laughs> we get the ex girl. Move to the next what, girl. I'm telling you what, that is probably the hardest thing to deal with as an athlete. The same people patting you on the back or kick you on the nuts on the way out. I wish him the best, man. No, uh, no, you know, honestly, no, no, honestly, no, honestly, honestly, I wish him the no, best. I don't wish him the best now. I hope he only, I hope he only throws single digit interceptions this year. Oh this year. my good. So you don't even, you don't even think. The injury had anything to do with it. He played so uncharacteristic that you don't think that injury played any kind of role. I and respect his toughness. I do. No, you do. don't. Yes, I do. You just said his signature move was the interception. I don't know what that had to do with his leg. Like, not he, reading he the defense. No, I don't dude, know what that had, had to do with his he leg. He went from having a gun to having a pop gun arm because he couldn't plant. Okay, well, learn to plant. His leg wasn't working. Oh my goodness! Like, like we're up, we're up, we're up against it. Yeah, we'll, oh, we'll yeah, talk. yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think Miami's got a great quarterback room heading into this coming season. We'll talk about it. Here. QAM broadcasting live from the Ed Moore.
Definitely the last time I'm coming into this building to do this show. People people are pointing this out on the Twitch and YouTube chat, and they're 100% right. There is something about sitting in the Tobin chair. Like, I am bewitched. Like, seriously, Leroy, I, I, don't, I don't like being petty about players. I, I've never spoken that petty about Tyler Van Dyke before. I was initially going to blame Leroy for bringing it out on me, but I think people are right, man. Dr. Toboggan and whoever else is saying it's this damn chair. Like I, I'm, I'm taking on the spirit of Tobin by sitting in here. Uh, that's all right, man. I like, I just listen. And the, the crazy thing is, is that I have a perspective. You don't right. I know what it's like trying to go out there at 70% and figuring you giving everything you have only to be critiqued as if you were 100%. But then yeah. if you don't go, being called soft for not giving 70%. It, it, you, 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 can't, you can't win. So when guys say, I'm not going because I'm not 100% and everybody takes that the wrong way, I don't get, I, you can't get mad. Okay. Because I it's understand also insulting. both sides of it. Yeah, it's also insulting. It, it, it is to a certain extent. To the backup. That I rather you, I rather this guy at seventy percent than you at hundred. Well, depending on who the star is of the team, and well, who remember, you rely Miami's, on, Miami's true, Miami's true freshman backup last year. He did beat Clemson despite the most conservative play calling I've ever seen, and he had them in it against Florida State. He had them in it. No, no, don't shake your head at me, Vlad. Emory Williams no, played no, very I'm, well I'm, in those games. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at one of the Twitchers. Oh, Dade South said. You need that Tobin 19 vaccine. <laughs> Somebody called me Tobino. Tobino. No, that's that's Vla that's uh that's Marcos. No, Marcos El is Tobino. Tobino. El Tobino. Oh, okay. I'm I'm Dobino. <laughs> Somebody called me Dobino. But no, but I I've been out there so far at all the Miami spring practices. And I, I, I have to offer this disclaimer because yes, a lot of lies get told this time of year, Leroy, because they haven't put on right. full pads yet. Like it's spring mm -hmm. football. You you know, like you, you played right. the game. Well, you we, know what spring well, I don't know what the rules are now, but we did full padded spring practices. Eventually they're gonna get there, but they right, you but have to, like you, you have limited. you yeah, you're limit you have to ramp up towards full pads and they they haven't put on full pads yet to this point. But you know, you you can watch skill position guys, you can watch one on ones, and you you have a certain amount of takeaways, but Obviously, the real truths are told when the pads come on, but you're just to me in terms of the quality of the football he throws, uh, the decision making, you know, the the way he the way he leads in practice. Like I'm I'm obviously I'm impressed with Cam Ward so far. Like he seems to be to this point as good, if not better, than advertised. And yeah. I know he works really, really hard. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, the other guy. I'm pretty impressed, Leroy, by the other transfer quarterback that came in, where obviously for this year, his ceiling would be second stringer. He's going to be the second or third stringer. But I thought Reese Poffenbarger, who came in from Albany, probably had his best practice that I've seen yesterday and probably popped more than any of the other quarterbacks did yesterday. Here's what I would say. One of the great things about practicing without pads, there's no clock. Mm. What I mean by no clock is, there's no clock to get rid of that football. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when your decision making shrinks because you're playing in a game or you're playing in full pads, that is more of an indication. Uh, like everybody's going to throw a pretty ball now, right? They're not, you can't get sacked. But when you get hit, then that clock speeds up. Then you start making irrational decisions. Right. That's where we need to get to to see, okay, does this ability transfer into game time situations? Because yeah. I got to tell you, there's a lot of quarterbacks that throw a pretty ball on seven on seven. Sure, but but, but like but in the case of Ward, this guy is a he's a four year starter. Last two years, so right. we. No, right, like right. You have you an idea. You have an idea. Right. What you're you have getting. an idea. Yeah, you have, yeah, an, you idea. have an idea. So I'm not. But, but there's. I'm not, but there, there, I'm not yeah. discrediting any of them. I'm just saying that when you get in the game situations, how about when you think you're going to have two and a half, three seconds, 
and your left guard to tackle miss. Right. Right. That's well, football. he had to deal with that a lot at Washington State. Their offensive right. line was garbage. He should that's, he should have a much better offensive line here. And and so that's 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 the things that that I'll look for, you know, moving forward. Um I want to know what the running game is going to be like. Well, that's an interesting one because um, you know, the, their most experienced running back um is is hitting the transfer portal, Henry Parrish. Like you, you you know, and, and good good player. Like, I, I know a lot of Canes fans like, oh, we didn't want this guy anyway. You know, he's got a low ceiling, but very high floor. Uh, but with that, you know, bad, depending on how you look at it, bad news that Henry Parrish is transferring. Mario Cristobal did give some good news yesterday that it sounds like Mark Fletcher, his recovery from – he injured himself in the bowl game. So, at least he didn't opt out. He played it. He got injured, injured his foot. That he's, like, on schedule or ahead of schedule. He'll probably be back in time for fall camp. Because that was one I was worried about, Leroy. I didn't know with Fletcher. I thought he might even miss some time to start the season, and Miami opens right. up Florida. But it sounds like Fletcher's going to be good to go. That might have something to do with why Parrish decided to leave, because Fletcher's obviously the starting running back when healthy. That guy's a beast. Uh, um, and, and the way – and see, here's the thing I've always wondered about. Guys transferring because they're not going to be the starter. Nobody plays every play at that position. Exactly. You know. And if, and if you get in and do your thing, your numbers and your carries will increase. Yeah. Because a coach have to be a damn fool to take somebody out who's productive. They got to ride whatever the Whatever reason. Yeah. Right. And so I always wonder, and, and here's what here's where I come in with that. What is, as Spo would say, what are your competitive juices that if you feel threatened that somebody else is going to have an opportunity that you just run? Mm -hmm. So wh wh what's going to happen when you go to the next team? They're right. going to have to promise you a starting job. I, I, no I think in the case, coach does that. I, I think in the case of Henry Parrish, though, he's he's got one season left in college. And like, you know, he he's he's trying to make the case to get into the NFL. And he okay. feels like, hey, if I if I'm in a and it's not just about starting, because you got Fletcher, Chris Johnson, Travante Citizen, who seems healthy again, right. uh, mm -hmm. Jordan Lyle coming in, AJ Allen. So there, there's so many guys in Miami's running back room. Fletcher or, or sorry, Parrish is like. Well, how many carries am I honestly going to get? I mean, the hot hand thing, I get well, it. Well, but he's thinking maybe I go to a room where – because one-year audition, a one-more-year audition to get into the NFL, maybe he feels like somewhere else gives him a better chance at that. Here's what I would say then. Then you question your ability. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Like, I didn't know how much I was going to play at Michigan. I, I really didn't. I didn't expect anything. I just knew I was going to go. I, to, to be honest with you, when I got to Michigan, I thought, well, I'd get a four-year education. Wow. I never – because when, when, when you step up in class and you see the guys playing and how productive they are, you don't just go in there and say, oh, I can do that. You know, you see the love that – the team and the coaching staff and the fans have for that player, you know that you're not just going to come in and take his job. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's the way it was with Jamie Morris. Mm. Right. And so from that standpoint, it wasn't like, I didn't care who was coming in there with me. And it didn't bother me. They got to play football too. Right. I like my chances. Yep. Yep. I, I don't care who's in there. And it's part of, Growing up and being a competitor and having to compete at everything. I had to compete at life, right? So things like that didn't bother me. I just figured as soon as I get on the field, I'm going to be ready and I'm going to get my chance. And that's the kind of – and, and that that is the thing that makes a good football team. When everybody's competitive, and I, we talk about, you know, the Canes – in the 80s and 90s, early 2000s, where you had guys who were first-round picks sitting for two years, and they were fighting like hell to get a little taste yep. of the football field. I mean, Willis McGahee probably didn't know if he was ever going to get to play. Like, he he got right. – 
because they, they didn't rotate running backs as much back then. They thought they had Frank Gore heading into his second year. He blew his knee out. Willis McGee, he damn near won the Heisman that year. Right. So, so as, as an athlete and a competitor, you, you making it sound like in today's day, Willis McGee, he would have transferred. Probably, he might have. I don't know. But, I can't speak but for him. Do you, but want, yeah. do you want guys like that on your team? No. You need, because that competitiveness that happens in the locker room, on the football, on the practice field, is the same competitiveness you need to win football games. And if nobody has that level of competitiveness, i.e. I'll look at the basketball team, mm -hmm. then how the hell are you going to win games? Yeah. You see what I mean? I do. And I so do. that's that's the the, 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 the issue that I have with some of these kids transferring after their first year. Like, when yeah. did you think you were supposed to get? And a sense of entitlement is what all these kids have nowadays. Well, that, that's like, my get off my lawn moment for today. Keep transferring. That's right. Well, we're, we're not going to transfer. We're with you till 2 p.m. today. Uh, coming up next, did the Miami Dolphins, did they get better in any of the position groups where they've lost players in free agency and, and signed new ones? Keep it locked right here. Tobin and Leroy hey, Show, Donovan. No, no. Go ahead. Donovan, Go ahead. Donovan, Go ahead. Before yeah, we yeah. leave, let me tell you something about Live Golf. Let's do it. Golf's boldest league is coming back to Miami from Friday, April 5th to Sunday, April 7th. And now's your chance to be there. Catch Live Golf at Doral's Blue Monster and see John Rahm, Brooks Kepka, and Dustin Johnson take on one of the world's most fearsome golf courses with live DJs and a euphoric headline concert. Tickets are selling fast, so grab yours now at livegolf.com. That's livgolf.com. This hour of Tobin...
We got hour two of coming up. I should wait, man. I'm interested to talk about the Dolphins. I was reading Omar Kelly wrote at alldolphins.com. Pretty good, actually, breakdown of like every position group where Dolphins have lost players to free agency and replaced players. And I think the only position groups where he thought, and I agree that they they probably upgraded are uh linebacker and tight end tight end there there's no question because like yeah. i'm looking at uh agreed I, I would agree with that I, I think people are gonna as much as you you love the uh, baker jerome baker yeah. um i would say this far too many situations in during last year's season where a linebacker was chasing the other team's tight end yeah that's right true. And, yeah. and so you have a guy who – think of it this way. He plays with the energy and the speed of Christian Wilkins at his position. Yep. He's all over the field. He's in every play, makes a ton of tackles, and can run. And so in today's football, when you think of who is the one player – that if you don't have that stud wide receiver or if you double that stud wide receiver, who is the one player on the offense that all of a sudden becomes just an important player on your offense? It's the tight end. It's not the slot receiver. It's the tight end because they have the most mismatches because there's aren't a, there aren't a lot of linebackers that can cover tight ends. And if you look at what Kelsey is doing, you look at what um, out in uh, in San Francisco, if you look at all the tight ends that have done, hell, look at all the tight ends just in this division. Right. Yes. Right? Correct. All of a sudden, all the tight ends in division, even if you don't have one, that guy ended up balling out because there are no linebackers that could cover him. That's right. I feel. I feel like the, I the bills were the, 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 the bills were two or three. Glad, 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 glad. I know what that thinking is. He's like, damn. What is he? Jets? We ain't got one. Right. No, Conklin. But I'm thinking. Well, Conklin. Did, did, did the Jets still have a quarterback? Is Aaron? Yes, we Aaron, do. Aaron He's going to be the vice president. No worries. Soon. We'll have a quarterback, and we'll have a tight end. Are we? Get, are we going to have the first? The when first, we get Brock Bowers, the we'll first have a tight VP end. to also. That's who you going to take. You going to take Brock Bowers? I think so. I think that's the move we're going into that's right a, now. I, I, I'm not going to lie. If you guys get Brock Bowers, I'm going to be very nervous because that, that dude is, like, unguardable. Right, right now we're – yeah, because at 10 right now after signing Mike uh, Williams. Uh, right. Here's the deal, though. Did you, see, did you see his tweet? No. <laughs> Mike Williams said, my agent called me and asked me if I wanted a jet for $15 million. He didn't know. He didn't realize he was saying, do you want to be a jet? For fifteen, oh, he was talking with a private jet. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, so you know what? If you, you think think about this, um, in Mike McDaniel's offense, and that the way that offense has been, they've relied heavily on a tight end, but a multi multi purpose tight end, not yeah. a Gasecki. Hey, look what he but a guy who you can put on the end of the line of scrimmage and block some. Yeah. Right? Um, the thing that, that scares me about Bowers is, remember, for like a stretch of five or six years, everybody was drafting the big-ass wide receiver that played tight end. Mm-hmm. And it didn't work out mm-hmm. because he can't play wide receiver. He get out there and get jammed up. Ah, uh, yeah. And you can't put him on the end of the line of scrimmage because he can't block nobody. But he's a great athlete. Yeah. But then what he's you do with coach. those athletes, you, you use them. You use them like Aaron Hernandez was used by the Patriots, where yeah. he could be an H back. He could be a tight end. You could use yeah, him for a jet sweep. You can't, you can't, you couldn't do that. These guys aren't built like that. They built these guys are Bowers is one of those. No, guys. no, no. He is, he is. But yeah, that's yeah, what I'm. Powers, th- yeah. That's where I'm trying to get to. Right now, you're looking. You going back to a tight end that plays in the backfield, that plays on the end of the line of scrimmage, 
that you can create mismatches on the slot, that you could put outside and goal line and, and catch a, a, a jump ball over the little bitty cornerback. Like, you can move him and play in multiple positions. That's what Bowers does, but the one thing that he does do is you can start him on the end of the line of scrimmage. That's what makes him, you know, so unique that in the last few years, all these tight ends have just been lining up in the slot. But now you're starting to get back to the tight ends that can do a lot of those things that uh, Kelsey can do, right? And and um, Kittle, Kittle, right, Kittle, and and so that's where you're going to, and and that's what the tight end does that the Dolphins brought in, that you can move Donald him around, Smith. you can move him around a little bit, right? You can maybe put him in a slot some. You can put him on the in line of scrimmage. You can't tell if you're blocking or running a pass play. Hell, even when I knew when Gasecki was in the game, we wasn't running it. Yep. So that's what that does. So when he says improvement at tight end, you actually have a tight end who's not limited to one style of play that you've had the last couple of years. So, yeah, and that Bowers dude, look here. That dude is a cheat code. I mean, I I mean, holy smokes! Like and 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 runs and can run. Like run, run. He ain't, and and along with doing all of that other stuff, and he's got size. He don't look just like he don't look like uh who's that um that that big ass wide receiver that came from Ohio State that was swole up. And every time he played football, which one, David Boston? Like, David Boston. like a whole bunch of them. Oh, yeah, David back. Boston. Yeah, I remember, you I know what David Boston was like. David Boston. That dude was nothing dude was but a muscles. He was a bodybuilder. That dude, better bodybuilder than football player, unfortunately. But we got we got a big <laughs> eleven o'clock hour coming up. Hour two uh, of the program is coming up next here on WQAM. Listen, you.
It's time for our Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tongue of Iloa. Not to a tag of Yoa. A for effort. Dolphins quarterback. Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. We go to hell. To Tongue of Iloa. Dolphins quarterback. Daddy loves you guys. Our Tua with Tobin and Leroy. Give it to me, Leroy. Our Tua in the program, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Damn right. Let's get some headlines here brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why would you buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. I saw a white one. Oh, yeah? In the parking lot. Yeah, white wrap. Oh, like a real one. I thought you meant like a like a yeah, little no, white like you have. No, I got I got all colors. I got white, red. Oh yeah, blue. yeah. But um, I so saw... you have multiple different props for that three seconds where you flash the truck on the screen. Yeah, I respect it. <laughs> That's what we do. We do unnecessary, over the top reads. That's it, most... and it's something. Yeah, well, and, and also the thing that I, I think I respect most about Tobin, uh, it, there's only one thing I respect about Tobin, how overboard he goes for his gimmicks because pe people don't realize what a pain in the butt it is to, like, find a full costume to be Macho Marlin's man, to, like, actually, like, buy fancy 1920s clothes for the gentleman's suite. Like, he, he, he goes the extra mile for stuff yeah. where it's like, yeah, I appreciate the bit. I've, I've been known to do a few bits in my day, but I don't go the extra mile that Tobin goes. I respect he's, that. He's got a, he's got a, a, a chest full of props, <laughs> except he doesn't have the top hat anymore. Why? Close set. He burned it. Why do you, what do you mean he burned it? I think we might have video of it. Was it a failed gentleman sweep attempt that he just burned it in anger? I think it was like the season was over or something. Oh. And so he started a, a fire inside the hat, which, like, he, he went a little too far. I mean, I this season, like, I'm I'm pissed at the Miami Heat. Like, I, I are, yeah. are they are they trying to do what they did last year, where it's like we're just gonna mail it no. in the regular season? Jimmy's mm -hmm. gonna play 50 games when he feels like it. We're gonna be the seven or the eight seed, yeah. and we're gonna try to get through the play. Hey, I, I don't here, like it. Here's what I've learned being around sports: what you take care of, what you can take care of, and don't play with fire. Because here's the other thing especially in basketball, you think that the other team don't have guys that could go 15 for 30 from three on any given night? And if you get on the wrong end of that and your season is over because you right. played games, it would be a shame. And so I, and my only problem was is this. Well, you know, they don't do nothing until after the – after Christmas. Well, they don't do nothing until after All-Star break. Well, they'll get it going. Even. Like, at some point, it is what it is. Right? And this is not speaking as a fan. This is not speaking as a hater. This is speaking as a realist in sports. At some point, if you don't take care of your own business, you're at the mercy of the basketball gods. And if mm -hmm. somebody come out on a given night, right, and light it up. See, people remember last year being in the play and going to the finals. But they don't remember I, they were okay, four minutes away I from remember, losing to right, Chicago. I remember that if Chicago had gotten hot with four minutes left to go in the game, your season would have been over. Exactly. So – for everybody to say, oh, they did it last year. Did last year ain't this year. What? Right. The yesterday's price is not today's <laughs> price. 
And that that reigns true in sports all the time. What do they say about uh, how many times the loser of the Super Bowl don't even make the playoffs? Right. Right? We always assume we're just going to keep building on this, but every season is different. You can't look at this season and say we'll do the same thing we did. The team is different. You got different players. You have different injuries. You have different problems. So I'm just wondering, with all this stuff, oh, we going to do this. Oh, we need to do this. Oh, we got to do it. You damn near 70 games into the season. Yeah. You should know. Yeah, they have, uh, yeah, there's 68 games in because I think they, they have 14 games left. I right. guess the good news is nine of those 14 are at home. The bad Which news is, is they haven't played well at home. They play, wait, exactly. they play better on the road. <laughs> they do. So maybe it'd be better if nine of 14 were on the road. Which well, they is are. Crazy, uh, which is crazy because we all looked at this season and the way they played on the road, we always said, ooh, they finished the season at home. So we're going to be able to get a nice little run here. And it hasn't yeah. worked out because you no. can't make these assumptions in sports. You can't do it. Well, they are on the road tonight, Leroy. Heat at Cavaliers tonight, seven o'clock. You they, can hear they're banged up too. They're banged up too. They, they are banged so up. Here's what so they got. The, you know what they got that the Heat don't what? have? I'm what? gonna use the Tom, a Tobin word. Wiggle room. Oh, I thought you were gonna say intangibles. No, wiggle room. They have intangibles. They have many intangibles. They got intangibles, but they got wiggle room because they already up there. Yeah, right. They they're where we want to be. Yeah, they're two, right? They're two or two. three. Yeah. yeah that's and what are the heat? Eight? Eight. Yeah. So so they have wiggle room. They have time to, to make sure their players are healthy because they ain't going to drop all the way to six. I kind of need you out the window. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, dude, here's how I approach a heat basketball game. I know they can beat anybody in the National Basketball Association. I've seen it. Yeah, sure. Okay. But I also know they can lose to anybody in the National Basketball Association. How about because this? I've seen it, because I've seen it. So I watch the games and I always say to myself, what Heat team is going to show up tonight? It's uh, it's March 20th now. The Heat have not beaten a team other than the Detroit Pistons since March 2nd. So in 18 days, nearly three weeks, the only team you've beaten are, I think, twice, right? The Detroit Pistons are the only team you've beaten in three so, weeks. Dono and, and we were, I'm looking at the standings, oh, right? Cleve, oh, no. Cleveland's third, right? Cleveland's oh, so third. They're third. They're, okay. third. they're oh, right. one Milwaukee's game. Second. Milwaukee's second. Right. Milwaukee's one game ahead of them. Cleveland's two games above the Knicks, and the Magic are a half game behind the Knicks uh, at the fifth seed. The Magic, is, so, is that the surprise team of the year? Um. Because Maybe. everybody thought everybody yeah. thought yeah. OKT was coming yeah. up, right? Yeah, yeah. The everybody, other teams... everybody thought Indiana was was going to be much improved, but for some reason we just don't look at Orlando like that. But that this was that might, Boncaro, the, that Boncaro is a beast. This is the best they've been since Dwight Howard played on Orlando. I think, right? Like honestly, this is this is the best they've been since like 2010. Right, and then they got the 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 Wagner twins. Are they twins? I know they're they're, they're brothers. I don't know. Yeah, they're, 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 they're brothers. I don't think they're twins. Uh, but here's I'm looking at it. The Heat are only two and a half games ahead of the Bulls. Right. The the gate. The yeah. Exactly. It's so concerning. They might want to. If you're gonna do the playing I, game, at least play is, the one. You want the one playing. You want to be in a but, seven but if eight. You're gonna play that game though, Vlad. The Heat are only one game out of the six seed, which would have been nice. If they'd actually right. Win but then if they had beaten, night. but if they had beaten Philadelphia, they, they would have clinched. Yeah. They would have gotten a tiebreaker, and they would have yeah. probably yeah. Here's they what I would say, Vlad. Gotten past Indy. Yep. All the things we just talked about in the last three minutes is the exact reason why. At seven thirty, I turn on the TV. I sit down. And I watch the game, and I try to get a feel for what Heat team is going to show up. And now, even more so, I got to wait until after third quarter. Yes, that third quarter the other night was oh. bad. Oh. So I don't know, like, and 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 I get it, I get it. But Vlad, at some point, uh -huh. at some point, you got to push that button. At some point, you got to play with a sense of urgency. Right. And, 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 and 
I don't, I'm not saying they don't play hard, but they have these lulls during the game. Right? And I would say this. I always say this, and, and people don't understand that this is in all sports. Everybody has players on their team that can play good for a period of time, right? The difference between the All-Stars and the Hall of Famers is they can sustain it for a longer period of time. That's it. But they're all NBA players. So for us to just make the assumption that this team should beat this team or this team should beat this team, if you get caught on the wrong end of that stretch, where that those NBA players start feeling themselves, it don't matter who they playing, they can win, and we we just we just dismiss that. I don't dismiss that. I don't. So I don't want the Heat to get down to the last week of the season and say we got to win to get in the play in because you can get a bad break and be out. Absolutely. And then in, in the play. And it'll be your break. fault. It'll be yeah. your fault. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you who has been uh, taking the regular season more seriously, even though they have dropped two straight Florida Panthers. Uh, they're not back in action until tomorrow. And Leroy, um, you know, I, I worked uh, the last couple of Panthers broadcasts before this extended time off because they last played, I think, on Saturday. They definitely like just for the legs. They they needed a little time between uh, you know five days off between games because they they look pretty tired uh, in their last couple of losses against Tampa Bay and Carolina. They're still second place. Uh, they're three points behind the Boston Bruins, but three uh, two games in hand. Leroy, so someone was asking about we games don't in want hand. we don't care about that, Dono. Yeah. We don't want hey, the President's Cup. Hey, wait, can I ask you this, Dono? Yeah. What good a game the hand games in hand? Like you, you just assuming you're gonna get two points. Well, I don't know. You with could get no version, points with this version of the Panthers. I feel like the games in hand are probably two points. Okay, Each. but we always say that. We always say that, but there's no guarantee you're gonna win. So yeah. games in hand don't mean nothing to me. I sometimes look at it as, hey, you in first place. You got two more games to play. You could ruin it. Well, you know, clearly you look at a at a cup of orange juice uh, that's half uh, half uh, capacity. You look at it as half empty. I look at it as half full because I I see two games in hand. I see four points. Okay, but like, like I just I don't I don't question it. I just say, why do we just always assume that when you have games in hand, that's two victories? Like they just lost two out of three. That's right. I'm not and 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 listen. I'm going to say it like this. And we had this conversation. Me and Vlad had this conversation. And he added one more team to it. I'm terrified of Tampa and Carolina. He added the Flyers. Okay? Oh, yeah. Because they play the OG version of hockey that you just started playing a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And so, and with Carolina, you lost twice. And never scored, or you score Great. one goal. So, yeah. so if that doesn't like just raise an eyebrow, right? And 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 the thing I hate about all this is a oh, don't worry, it'll be different in the playoffs. Will it? Well, it, well, and, and that can work both ways because I remember, yeah. uh, you know, I remember a few years <laughs> ago. I remember a few years ago that the Panthers, like in the regular season series, like they dominated the Tampa Bay Lightning, and people are like, "Oh, that's the team I want to face the playoffs." Right. They faced them in the playoffs; they got shellacked. Wait, but right? you know what it was? Because Kucherov was on the bench. That's right, and because, Kucher- because Kucherov, 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 hey. they were cheating. They, they were cheating because they had Kucherov yeah. and Stamkos. They like pretended they weren't on the roster. They're like, "Guys, right. I know you're healthy. We're going to put you on injured reserve." So we can add extra players to the roster. They're, they they should have been disqualified from that playoff. Here's the, the crazy thing about that. Every time I watch Tampa Bay play, um, play the Panthers, everything good that happens for Tampa Bay, Kucherov is in the middle of it. Oh, he's incredible. Oh, and, and, oh, and, 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 and Stam- Stamkos killed him the other night. Right. And he's like 60. Right. So, so look, I would say this. Unlike any other sport, hockey is get in and you got a chance. Yes. Unlike 
Any yeah, you, you see eight feet sport. ones routinely. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. even if the Panthers are the one seed, the two seed, the three seed, hockey doesn't care. Like it's still nerve wracking going into the playoffs, no matter what your seeding is. Right. Yeah, because hockey, it's like you go to any regular season game. It's obviously it's it's more physical than most sports out there. It's more physical. Guys are taking more hits than basketball, soccer. I'm not going to include football in that, obviously. But then, you know, you go to a playoff game. I remember Leroy when I first years ago started working on the broadcasts and the Panthers got into the playoffs because I'd watched a lot of hockey on TV. Hadn't gone to a lot of games in person. But you're at games in person. You go to, you know, 41 home regular season games. You go to a game. In the playoff. I'm watching this. I'm like, how are these guys like? able to play again two nights three nights from now it's like insane right. in the playoffs what they put their bodies through so i used to complain about because the nhl all-star game and they changed around the format it's like three on three like they don't they don't right. play it the same way they used to but like the nhl all-star game even when they were going five on five they they would take it so easy on themselves and i used to complain but then after watching what they do in <laughs> the playoffs, I, I will games. i will never complain yeah. about how it's like no touch all star games i will never complain about that again in hockey or football for that matter right it it is it is and 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 i'll tell you folks if you watch hockey on tv save your money do what you got to do to go to one live hockey game It'll yeah. change your life. Yeah, it's so different. You can't, do. you can't imagine. You're like, when you're on TV, you go, damn, they switching again? Like, they, you just got out here. But when you see it live, they'll like skate <laughs> back and forth three times. You go, give him a break. Give him a yeah. break. He looks tired. Yeah. It, it's take a brother. Yeah. Take a brother to a hockey game. Who's you, never been to a hockey do, game? Do you remember? Oh, they'll be the they'll be the biggest hockey fan of all yes, time. Yes, dude. Do, do you, you remember the, the guy, the guy who much. went the the, the 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 black hockey fan who went viral years ago was the Saint. He was in St. Louis and like he was watching the St. Louis Blues for the first time, and he was like, "They're pulling the goalie now." He's like, "This is crazy!" Like he was like reacting <laughs> to every little. Hey, it was one of the funniest things. I know. I heard. I saw something a couple of weeks ago, and I want to know if you knew this rule. If you pull the goalie in overtime and lose, you don't even get the point. I didn't know that. Yes. Really? Yes. I guess that's why you'd never see that happen. It, it happened. One of the coaches oh, and, and, and the coach said, We needed two points. Nobody cares about one point. We need two points. Wow. He pulled the goalie day one, and then they were talking about it on TV and said, You know, there's a rule in hockey. That if you pull a goalie in overtime and lose, you don't get a point. You get no point. I did not point. know that. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Hockey's a ridiculous sport. I, it, it, you know what? I have, like, dude, just think about this, Vlad. What type of human being, depending on what time of season, how important the game is, when a, a puck is getting ready to get shot at 50, 60, 70 miles an hour, will jump on the ground and put his body in front of it. Oh, not once, yeah. not twice, yeah. but maybe six or seven times. Yes! I'm like, listen, look, I'm in the stands going like this. Dude, there ain't no <laughs> way in hell, <laughs> right? Like, I you know just... What I always, you know what I always gave them credit for? After a, they could play a two-and-a-half-hour, three-hour grueling game. And then there's certain guys that you have to interview them post game. Yeah, they got to talk yeah. to Doug Plagans after. The you got to talk to them on the bike. They still got conditioning. They oh, got to do yeah, yeah, after yeah. they just yeah. right. They just went through three hours. They still got right. conditioning to do for like another forty five minutes to an hour. Yeah, it it, it is it it. I have and 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 you don't get this experience on TV, but if you see it live. And you see guys throwing their body and diving around and all this, you have a different appreciation for high. Because look, I went in college. It's not the same. They hardly touch each other. Right. right? So, I mean, but, but Michigan has a more prominent college program. Yes, but they don't like even players. even watching even watching that. Um, yeah. They don't they don't hit the same way. You're not allowed to. Oh, I see. You're not allowed to. And and so it oh my goodness it 
I'm like, I see these guys and and like, and 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 by the way, there's only a, a couple of little guys anymore. They used to all be ants, right? Yeah. With a couple of enforcers, right? Yes. Now they're all 6'3". Six three. Six three, my guy. I got a guy in New York. He's like six seven, six eight, just beating everybody down. Jeez. Oh, he's Not like uh, Peter Warrell. No, no, no. He's a uh, no, no. Yeah. Peter Warrell. He looked intimidating. Uh, did did, did yeah. Dano Chara still play? That dude was a. Oh, that he was like six eight. Yeah, he beating, was, yeah. It, nah, it, yeah. It. This guy Rempy. He's just beating guys up. Six eight, nineteen years old, just looking young, dumb. That's all he is. It, it he's is a crazy. good fighter. It's cr it's crazy. It's crazy how like yeah, man. I have the utmost respect for those guys. And 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 what y'all talking about? Like them guys go skate around all day and, and play in the game and lose a chicklet or something like that and then go work out. Right. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're going to go work out during this commercial break. We will be right back. It's our Tua continues here on the Tobin and Leroy Show. Dono in for Tobin today, AM 560 Sports, uh, I, I, WQAM. I, I, one second. Let me tell you about Cosar Coffee. We're here. I might as well let you know about Cosar Coffee. You know about Cosar Coffee, Dono. You know, you know. Bernie, BK. You talk about it, and I love and I love Bernie. So I'm gonna yeah. drink. You know, Bernie, a U of M great, one of the most positive people that you probably ever meet in your life. Uh, he's known for his comebacks on the field, but his greatest comeback is the one he made with his health. After a grueling career, over 40 surgeries, 100 concussions. Bernie was down but not out. He realized that food is medicine and changed what he put into his body. Bernie started creating wellness products and has finally released Kosar Coffee, an organic coffee that's infused with vitamin D and resveratrol, which is nature's miracle antioxidant. This combination of ingredients is exclusive to Kosar Coffee and is a perfect way, perfect way to start your own journey to a healthier life. Here's what you do. You go to KosarCoffee.com. To not only order your game-changing coffee, but you can get some merch. I have a sweatshirt and a shirt. And you can get a discount exclusive for our listeners. Just use code Leroy. Code Leroy. You guys know Bernie. You deserve to be healthy because you matter. This hour of Tobin and Leroy is sponsored by Miami Lakes Auto Mall.
I always appreciate Tobin singing that. It is our tour here on the Tobin and Leroy Show. Don Owen for Tobin today. We got Jay Fig is somewhere. Uh, I know I've seen her in, in the chat oh, no. today yelling at me to break. She'll, uh, be, back. She'll be back. Oh, she, uh, she's not in she, right now? She, she dipped no, out? She doesn't come in until uh, AM goes to PM. Yeah, okay. she's a nooner. We got it. Like, did Marco send any game shows in we can do today? No, man, no game that shows. Spring break trivia. That was lit. I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoyed that NBA. Spring yeah, but break then, then he also did the uh, goat bracket. Oh, my God. What was that? He so took he goats did from all different... goats in the all sports. And we did a 16 uh, like a bracket. By the way. It was so bad because I realized something when I was going. I was thinking about it yesterday. I was like, well, wait a minute here. That wasn't – he did 10. It wasn't, it wasn't even. Oh. Yeah, he how did, do you do a bracket he, with yeah, 10? Unless, unless there's bye weeks. It wasn't 16, bro. I <laughs> think it, it wasn't 16 because I thought about it. He had Gretzky versus um, – he had Gretzky versus – So uh, he did 20. SCA? No, no, no. He just did ten. Like it was, he was supposed to do. He was either supposed to do eight, eight or twelve. But it, yeah, because we met, somehow Ali wasn't in it. What? Yeah, Ali, we, Ali was in the Ali won, but he we never did semifinal. But we never did the semifinals with Ali. Right. So who do you think won? Right, yeah. I, you think just think of all the goats. Who did you? And we'll tell you who he lost or if he won. I mean. Okay, okay. We, well, I, we had like Serena. Just, go, just from any sport. Michael Jordan. Did, he, was yeah. he even considered? The Jordan goat? was considered. Okay, okay. Uh, Ali, obviously. I yes. guess he kind of gave that one away. Yeah. Uh, did, did Was Pele the soccer goat? No. No, no, Messi. Messi was. I mean, Messi I guess, and Ronaldo. Yeah. Messi and Ronaldo were. So, yeah, I feel like that's sad. I mean, I love Messi. Uh, and I, I, did, I think Messi, I would take Messi over Ronaldo, but how, how, do, you, how do you exclude Pele? This is sacrilege. Because well, we're talking about on the field. We're not talking about outside stuff. It has to be within because what you did in the games and in the stats. Yeah, but I feel like everything needs to be. I think the outside thing is part of it. Like, <laughs> obviously, Ali, you could argue greatest boxer of all time, but also right. can you, know? hey, but can you, you know? can argue it. You can argue it. But the, but the cultural influence. But that's, of what and that's what we coach. argued. And that's what we argued that he, what he did off out of the ring became more important than what he did in the ring. In the ring. And right. he was a he great was also fighter. A beast in the ring. Too. Because you have, to, you have to understand, he missed four years of his fighting career. That was right. his prime. Right. And so, and so if we call him the greatest, we're making assumptions. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'll tell you an interesting story, Donna. Okay. I saw Muhammad Ali fight. Really? In, yes. When? When? In the, where? In the Superdome. Like and Ali. Su Superdome. I want to say 1975. Okay, so in the prime. Uh, no, he wasn't there as far. Um, oh, the well, latter fought, half of the prime. I think okay. he fought. Who did he fight in New Orleans? Larry Holmes. I don't know. I wasn't, no, no, no. I he didn't fight Larry Holmes to the eighties. So the, the time. Who did he fight? Who did he fight? Um, I'll look it up because I, I. Um. So what was his prime? Like the sit, like the sixties, right? Then it yeah. Been? When yeah. he first, usually they have that run of like, if you right. have a run, it's like you when you first get the championship. He fought Leon Spinks. Leon Spinks, there it is. Okay. For the title in yeah. 1978. Yep. 78. Okay. 78. Yeah, February. Was, yeah, February 15th. I was 10. He lost that fight. Yeah. Leon Spinks won. Yeah. 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 But it was Come on, man. That's what I'm saying. He's the greatest. Individual outside, but but here's the he's thing got is five but the, losses, man. But but, but the five. thing is, but the thing is that was that was after Mr. Here. here. That's here. great. But if you lose, you here. lose. Think, like, think like, about this. From, think from, about Mayweather this. Mayweather is like 50 and 0, 49 and 0, whatever, but it's like hand picked. You know, I'm not saying Wait. he's not like no, don't do it. Don't do it more carefully than Ali because you know what? That same rule that you're talking about ruined Roy Jones. Roy Jones didn't have anybody to fight okay. in his weight class. So he switched weight classes. Good for him. And I'm then when he went back, he right got now. beat up. But yeah. here's the deal. Here's the deal. That one of the reasons why Muhammad Ali lost was because 
you have to understand that a fighter, when you win the championship, you got 10 years most right after that to do all your damage. Right. He lost four years of that. And so his boxing career gets lost in all the other stuff he did because he lost those four years of prime boxing. Mm -hmm. So that's why he lost. He didn't lose. He didn't lose because of him being Muhammad Ali. He lost because his boxing career didn't match up with everybody else's career due to the fact that he lost four years of his prime. Well, t tell me how these other goats did. What about what about Tom Brady? Did he win? Brady won. He advanced, but Brady had easy. He had easy matchups. Right. He had easy matchups. Okay. He went against Tony Hawk. And then oh, he went to the, I mean, I, and then he yeah he had an easy he had a, like one of the easiest like, buys. I, I, don't, I don't know crap about skateboarding, but it, it, is is Tony is he really the greatest ever, or uh, did he have like because he had video games and stuff like that dude? That's, that that that, that counts as um. But, that but was as, he uh, here? An accomplishment. What, yeah. Was he the was he the the greatest or just the first that was? That, that's what I was getting at, right? Because right. I feel like he blazed the trail, and maybe there have been greater right. ones. Right. Right. So so. So he lost. So I can say the same thing about Pele. Be Pele blazed the trail. Yeah. Okay. But, but, but he also he also has uh, you know. So he, sunny, I mean, in that in that realm, Tony Hawk is the guy. But in right, and, but in, but soccer was still Mark, big. Soccer right, was still but, big. It wasn't like a new sport. But Marcos is goat. He had Tony Hawk versus Brady. So Brady won. I hope so. Uh, he had Jordan versus LeBron. We picked LeBron. You did? Yes. Yes. Twenty years. Oh. Wait, hey, man. dude, yeah. 20 years, no breaks. 20 years, bro. 21, excuse me, 21. 21 years, no breaks, and they still relying on him to win. Do you understand that you you could have had a child in 03 when he when he went to the league? And, and you your son could have went to watch LeBron play. Your child is now an adult, it, it able to drink. get a drink, and he's still buying a drink to watch LeBron bust people's ass. Yeah, that's that's something, man. Well, Jordan, Jordan lost a, uh, a couple of years uh, playing Whatever, baseball. but that counts. That counts. That counts. That, that counts. counts. It wasn't and 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 Jordan. No wait. breaks. No when, breaks. When Jordan went to Washington, were they really relying on him, or they were just the swans? Nah, they were trying to get money. They were trying to get yeah, right. It was a money grab. Sure. Was See a what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so, so we, had, like, we had Usain Bolt. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, we also had Serena Williams, and we had Tiger Woods. We had Serena versus Tiger in a in a that was a. It was, was hard. It was hard. That was a hard, hard one. Because think about this. I, I and I didn't bring I didn't bring tiger, I didn't bring this tough. fact up because a lot yeah. of people don't know enough about golf. Yeah. Right. And I didn't want to go back and forth because either okay. one of them could have won. Yeah. Tiger Woods was the number one golfer in the world as a black man for a total of 13 years. Wow. Now they just asked Scotty Scheffler, who's number one in, in doing everything in golf, right? Yeah. They asked him about comparing him to Tiger. And you know what he said? He said, well, if I'm going to even be mentioned with Tiger, I would have to be number one in the world for seven more straight years because oh. Tiger was number one in the world for eight straight years. Wow. Think about that. Wow. You want to talk about changing the sport? Oh yeah. So we could I could have had the argument either way, right? Yeah, because Serena the did similar about, things with tennis, thing and women's of, tennis, especially. The thing about Serena is she dominated. Yeah. Like there was no questions asked. If she was healthy, she was on the court, you had no chance. Right. But Tiger and also, and also, she and her end was was a little bit better than Tiger's end. Tiger yeah. could barely make the cut now. Right, Tiger yeah. don't make the cuts. He quit after. He, he also like and he forget, and he withdraws from tournaments. But too, people you know? also forgot when, when he had that that car wreck a few years ago. Like a lot of people thought that was going to be career ending. Yeah, like, the fact that he even he came almost back lost from his that. Leg. Yeah, he almost lost his leg and he came back from that. I, I I'm not too worried that he's not making cuts when he came back from a serious. Yeah, ordeal. but but again, again. When we talking about Tiger versus Serena, I would say this. Tiger was a famous golfer from the time he was 16 years old, which is unheard of. Right. 
Tiger was on TV at age three. He was on a late night show. Right? Yeah, so Perkins go too. <laughs> so <laughs> I just, you know, it, it it became really hard because here's what here's what happened. I thought that he needed to do four one seeds. And Tiger would have never played Serena until the semifinals. Mm-hmm. Instead Tiger should be at Tiger and Serena. They, they, listen, two, if he no, had done the right seeds, seeds, right, they're two one seeds. Well, it, it sounds like it's a good thing Marcos isn't here today because it sounds like a train wreck. No, it no, wasn't. No, it, no, it wasn't. It, it, it was, wasn't. It was. But then when you go hurt. back and think about it, you're like, uh, well, wait a minute. I think I'm, we might have missed the. Uh, we might have missed someone that advanced in the round. Right. Joe Lenardi's job is safe. Is what yeah. Well, yeah. It was. It went from eight to four. The four. The final four and the final four was great. You, you expected those four. So who who was the final four again? Yeah, uh, the final four was. Uh, it was LeBron. It okay. was Serena. It was Brady. And it was uh, Usain Bolt. Oh, Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt is a good dude. I, I remember like uh, a few couple years ago, my wife and I went to Jamaica. And I don't know if there's only like one road like in Jamaica, but we happened to like on the road from the airport to our hotel. We not only passed by like the high school where Usain Bolt went and it was like so you could tell it's like a, people make pilgrimages there. And we also drove by Bob Marley's hometown, which is always like un, unbelievable, like two hour bus ride. And we drive by Usain Bolt High School. Bob Marley's old house and home. That was incredible, man. How much culture there is in like that one street there in Jamaica. Date South just put right before we go to break. Date South has a great point. Think of all the goats that are around the same age. LeBron, right, Serena, that's, you know what? Tiger, I, I get Ronaldo, on Messi, Bolt. I get on Tobin about this all the time, right? At some point, instead of being petty about sports, you got to sit back and enjoy it because – 20 years from now, you're going to sit back and tell your grandkids when they talk about the one or two players that are great at that time, you're going to say, I was around with Tiger and Jordan and, and for me, Jack Nicholas and Usain Bolt and Carl Lewis, right? And yeah. Serena and Venus, right? And you're talking about Gretzky. And just all these great players Tua. and Tom Brady, <laughs> no, right? Don't mention Tom Brady, yeah. right? You're going to tell stories to your grandkids. Y'all don't remember Dan Marino, <laughs> right? Like, well, th these are some of the greatest athletes to play. And we all got them all. In our well, stretch. Yeah, but wait, wait. Anybody old enough? Y'all don't remember. Tyson is a punchline now. He make funnies. But I used that to be dude, scared of Yeah. I used dude, to be. I still am. I'm not scared That dude of is nothing to play I know, with. <laughs> I, know, I know. Well, Leroy. What's up? I know another couple of guys that are nothing to play with, like Brooks Kepka, Dustin yeah, Johnson. Yeah, I got you. And John Ron. Ghost. Golf's boldest leak. Now, I'm going to confirm this, but I'll get to it. Golf's boldest league is coming back to Miami from Friday, April 5th through Sunday, April 7th. And now's your chance to be there. Catch Live Golf at Doral's Blue Monster and see John Rahm, Brooks Kepka, and Dustin Johnson take on one of the world's most fearsome golf courses with live DJs and a euphoric headline concert. Tickets are selling fast. So grab yours now at livegolf.com. That's livgolf.com. I think the concert is Akon. I'm going to confirm it. WQAM.
No doubt, my favorite Oscar song. I was glad they did this one at the uh, at the old halftime show. There, Vlad. It, 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 where's Leroy picking up his vehicle? He's picking up his vehicle. You know, they they were just talking about this, Vlad, on uh, on ESPN, and I think uh, I think you're right, and I I think Stephen A. Smith is actually right about this. He's not right about uh, a whole lot of things necessarily, but uh, the NBA play in. I'm sick of it. Well, the thing is, like, you you look at teams that superstars like LeBron James, KD, Jimmy Butler are, are projected to be in the play in right now. It's like you have, and obviously, you know, you take a guy like LeBron a little bit more seriously in this conversation in terms of the star power. Like, you could be in a situation where LeBron James may get bounced in the play in and you don't have him in the playoff when he. I guess the Lakers are the nine seed right now, but assuming they they're in punchers punching distance of top eight, which normally would be an automatic bid into the playoffs. Now you have to go through the play in. Not even if they're the nine and ten, they have to win one, right? And then play the loser right. of the seven eight, right? So the the league can lose that has a chance of not having both Steph Curry and LeBron James in the playoffs. Wow, <laughs> jeez, just because what? networks tv networks won an extra game yeah like i'm sorry and i i love the game but the fringe fans are not gonna watch okc as much as the shea sga is a great player he's not a superstar that, he's, he's not, not not he's on he's, he's not, not in the same way he's an yeah. nba superstar he but he's NBA not superstar. he's not he doesn't transcend the right sport, the not as of yet anthony edwards is coming there he's getting there soon but he's not that yet sacramento not there yet they would want the Phoenix Suns with Durant. They would want the Warriors with Curry. They're going to want the Lakers with LeBron. Yeah. They're missing out because of their, their greed. Their greed. I got it because of the, the bubble. You needed something because of the bubble because – Well, lost... by the way, speaking of NBA greed, did that in-season tournament, did that move the needle for you? That was a no. good money grab. That they no, had because what's year. going to be the joke now? The in-season champion is going to be a team that might not make the playoff right. or get knocked out in the play Exactly, because the because the in-season tournament champion might realize we're not going to be in the playoffs. We're going to take this super seriously, the league, but I mean, other teams won't. Leagues get stupid sometimes yeah. because they want to make so much – like yeah. th their greed makes them so stupid at times. So I understood during the bubble because you missed a third of the season, the last third of the season. So it was just a way of trying to get teams that were yeah. battling for positions in they, order for them to get in. They just didn't have enough time. They didn't have the, enough yeah. time, so you could do the playing game. Yeah, It was great. You had Dame, Portland, beautiful. But there was nothing to do at that time. There was nothing to watch. So everybody's going to be home watching that. The world started to get back to normal it's starting to get back to normal could, after could the, 2020. so so the the nfl has had i think a little bit more success with like expanding things like because like you know they they added an extra playoff that's what they did seed they, a couple yeah. years ago but they also they added an extra game you had an extra but it makes sense though and right. you're not playing but but, but but at some point would, would would could it be too much vlad and obviously we think about players say there's probably too many thursday night games is one place i would start yeah but if they were to add another record because i know they're talking about 18 they're gonna add another it, they'll would have, have to add another much? buy don't if yeah. you add another buy you'd have to add another buy yeah which, like, would, I get a, which it, would effectively make the season two weeks longer well what the, well we already we're not bitching, complaining that the league the season ends in middle of February. So, right. why do we care if it ends in the near the end of February? I wouldn't complain because we don't. Because you see what happens once the Super Bowl is and gone. Honestly, I'm not complaining about the college football playoff expanding either. Like, they, it gives you gives it, you him a chance, a, a and, and, not, chance. and not just that. Like, obviously, that's selfish, but not just that. Because the other part of it is, even with a 14 playoff. It basically made all the bowl games irrelevant because players just decided if I'm not in the four team playoff, I'm just going to opt out. So at least now you've got more playoff games. I would assume guys are not going to be opting out of playoff games. Unfortunately, the traditional bowls are almost dead now. Unfortunately, but what's the traditional bowls? What? Are, what? Because most of the traditional bowls are are part of the college football playoff. Yeah, they're part pitches. of the rotation. Of right. Playoffs. So it's yeah. like I don't nobody. Look, gambling's gambling. So maybe back in the 80s and 90s when the Blockbuster Bowl was, you know, here, yeah, and it, like, that, you know, Joe Robbie Stadium, when it was called at the time, had like five bowl games yeah. within like a month of each other. Or, or Orlando used to have or like seven. Orlando yeah. would have seven. Like, they would be like, geez, 
Then they just play in Orlando like in that crappy stadium five days ago. That stadium's an embarrassment. Like I, I went there um, a few years ago. I went to that stadium for because I had I had gone Did you go there for that UM Florida game. Uh, no, I, I went there before they supposedly renovated it for a, for a UM, uh, one of those bowl games that they lost there. I went to it years ago and that was before they renovated it. And then like, I remember like six, seven years ago, it was a whole thing where it's like, oh, the stadium's going to be closed for a whole year because we're renovating. So I go back to the stadium a couple years ago after the renovations, I went for a Billy Joel, co- which was awesome. Billy Joel concert there. But I'm like, they renovate. It's still a dump. Like what are you renovating? <laughs> what? <laughs> It's still an awful stadium. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, and therefore, that's why you don't play in those stadiums. That's why yeah. these guys are leaving out because it's all about money, baby. And right. the fact that you, the, a lot of these guys, you were upset at the Florida State players for, for people were upset at the Florida State players for opting out when they didn't make the college football playoff uh, uh, rankings. And it's like, well, what was there for them to do? They did exactly what they were supposed to, and they're still not going to be able to fight for what they did. Right. What's there? What's left for them to do? Yep. By like way, play and get hurt, and then might cost themselves millions. By the way, Leroy did confirm in the the group chat that uh, Akon will be performing at Live Golf. I know. Nice. He, when he did the live read, he was like, "I think Akon's performing. I will confirm it." He just confirmed it. A few Dude, minutes nice. Later. He's been saying it all week, so it's good that he, you know, he did. It's official now. There you go. Because you. Know, it was Wednesday. Oh, we got a big 12 o'clock hour coming up here. Uh, Tobin and Leroy show Dono in for Tobin. Uh, Leroy is going to be back at some point. Vlad is filling in for Marcos. Jay Fig is filling in for Jay Fig. We'll be back here on AM 560 Sports WQAM.
Yeah. Let's get you in the mood, man. For what? Anything. <laughs> just gets you in a good mood. It does, actually. It does. I am in a better mood than before you put this on. Well, everybody, we all know this is the cat hour. Because you know I'm a cool cat. Every noon, every time 12 o'clock comes, you know, we play this song. And we play it because this is the cat hour. And this cat hour. Sponsored by Celsius. Hockey fans, don't sit this one out. When it's game time, make Celsius a part of your play. And get that energy up. Game day is fueled by Celsius Essential Energy Drinks, the official energy drink of the Florida Panthers. This is actually quite delicious. This is the uh, Celsius Oasis vibe. I got the sparkling mandarin marshmallow. That's an interesting combination. It is. Mandarin marshmallow. I, ne- I never would have thought of putting those two. I-, I guess that's probably like a creamsicle, right? Probably similar it's to probably that. like a creamsicle, but sparkling too. I like it. The sparkling is a must for me. Well, the Florida Panthers, uh, they have enjoyed some much needed time off. You know, they had a-, a tough loss on home ice against Tampa on Saturday. That was the second uh, of a back to back after losing to Carolina for nothing on the road. So the Panthers are going to be off till tomorrow night. They're hosting the Nashville Predators. Uh, obviously, uh, I don't think Vlad takes the President's Cup as seriously as I do. I would like to. Win. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. You, do you think it's a curse? It's like an absolute Dolan? curse. Remember, they had they won the President's Cup two, three years ago. And most of the teams that win that don't win the championship. They get right? knocked out in the second right. round or first, okay. like Boston did to well, the Panthers let's last let, week. Let's let Boston have it then, because uh, Boston does lead the field with 97 points. The Panthers still have two games in hand and are at 94 points right now. Uh, so that would have them also second seed in the Eastern Conference because nobody in the West has more points than the Panthers do. So, yeah, tomorrow night against Nashville. Let me see if I got odds on that game yet. I do like to bet a little bit of hockey, Vlad. I'm not going to. Of course, hard rock. The hard rock, yeah. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, I don't know why. On ESPN, they usually show you that new uh, the ESPN odds. They, they're not showing me odds on that. I, I would imagine the Panthers are probably going to be favorites at home for that. So we will lock that in tomorrow here on uh, on Cat Talk. And by the way, got other headlines, my friends, brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck in a car store? Palmetto Ford, we know trucks. trucks. Miami Heat are back in action tonight. They're on the road. They are two and a half point underdogs in Cleveland. Uh, and the Cavaliers tonight are going to be without Donovan Nip Mitchell, whose nose is broken. Yeesh. Max Struess, our old friend who's got a knee strain. Mm. Evan Mobley, sprained ankle. Dean Wade, knee soreness. Jeez. Uh, But the Heat, uh, this is a questionable tag, but Bam Adebayo is questionable for tonight. And Jimmy? Is Jimmy questionable as well? Because he hasn't played the last two games. Jimmy was born questionable (laughs) when it comes to regular season games. I mean, you know, I wouldn't wouldn't bank on Jimmy playing tonight. Wow. That's funny. So if, if if we go into this one tonight, Without Jimmy and Bam, it's like you had an opportunity to beat a Cleveland team. I don't know who is play. I don't. I don't know who's left on their team that's playing for Cleveland tonight. But if you if you play it without Jimmy and Bam, then I don't know. And and the Sixers were shorthanded the other day, and you still found a way to lose to them. Kyle Lowry got his revenge. I had never seen him play that efficiently in a Heat uniform. No, I don't think you've. I think the last time he's played that efficiently was uh, in Toronto. Yes, twenty nineteen when they won a championship was the last time he played that efficiently. Oh, man. So we also have, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so bummed that I, I can't go to this because I, I got uh, family obligations tomorrow afternoon. But the Italian national team, they got in which I hate international breaks. I'm a big club, European club soccer fan, Inter Milan supporter. But uh, international break and the Italian national team is going to be at Drive Pink Stadium tomorrow taking on Venezuela. But like, Vlad, I feel like I need to find a way to go and represent you because, you know, it's going to be 95 percent. Venezuela, which is fine. We got a great, you know, South American population down here in South Florida, but I'm a supporter of the Azzurri, and I feel like I need to go out there and represent because there's not going to be enough representation out there. You better rock your blue and go out there. I'm going to. They release these new jerseys. I, I don't really like. You them. don't like the new jerseys? No. <laughs> I, I'm I'm all I'm I'm tired of Adidas. Like I, I feel like they they've started half-assing it. Adidas. They, Look, I've always said the University of Miami's decline in football. It's always been when they switch from Nike to Adidas. That's all, me. I mean, hate to say it, but they they were declining. They were still with Nike till like 2015, 20. They, there was plenty of decline that happened before that switch. It's, it's just still, 
I just don't like them in shells. Okay. That's just me. Yeah. That's just me. As long as Adidas pays more than Nike did to the year. Well, they extent. might. They, they might. Do. They did. They, they definitely might. paid more than Nike used to. But, you know, I still like the, the check sign. Okay. Inter Miami is next going to be in action on Saturday. Uh, they're going to be on the road, though. They're going to be at the uh, New York Red Bulls. So hopefully another yes, victory. Yes, this Saturday afternoon. And I, I would imagine Messi is not going to play, right? Because he uh, he 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 um, had to decline his call up for Argentina for the international break because of an injury. So I don't think he's going to play. So Lisa said, "You can see your family another time. Go represent your people." Yeah, I mean, I got I got family in town from Oklahoma. I, I also have like I've worked at like the games of five p.m. or if it was like a seven thirty eight o'clock, it'd be easier for me to get out there. Like you know, I, I'm, I'm I'm gainfully employed. I got some stuff I got to do tomorrow. That's tough. Stuff. That's tough. <laughs> got to go represent your team, man. Yeah, especially because uh, I think my son would enjoy going out there and and seeing it because he's he's getting into soccer a little bit more. He's got no patience though. It, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it, how old is he? Four. He's six. Now, six. Oh, yeah, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patience is, you know, been with them. But like, but he, I respect my wife hates the fact that I'm indoctrinating him. Okay. Because Vlad, I, I imagine you're probably this way with your teams. It, I, I don't think anybody would be working in the field we work in if you're not like this. When, when I'm watching, when my team doesn't play well, I get bummed. Like it, it'll ruin my day. It, it, and, and, and on, on the flip side, if I enjoy a big victory, you know, for whichever team it is, Hurricanes, Dolphins, Inter Milan, I guess Inter Miami, you know, uh, Florida Panthers, Miami Heat. When we get a big win, I'm I'm over the moon. I'm so thrilled about it. And my son has reached a point where, like the other day, we were watching uh, an Inter Milan game and they didn't play that well. They drew one one, and my kid was pissed. Like it it bummed him out. And also the Champions League game when they lost in penalty kicks to Atletico, my kid was like more bummed out than I was. And my wife starts shooting daggers at me because it's like. You're teaching him how to ruin your day with sports, just like you. Like she didn't want that for my kid. She wanted a better life for him. But no, he's in the mud with me. No, he's got to learn. This is it, kid. This is the. This is the. This is what you chose. The minute you, the minute you were, you came out of your mom's womb, you were gonna be exposed to our life. Every listen, I'm giving up my most of my life for you. That's it. Yeah, that's right. Everything. There's no more carelessness. Everything has to be with your. Everything that I do, is because of you. You're everything, first and foremost. So therefore, kid, you're going to have to learn this is life. And in life, you're happy when your team wins and you're saddened when your team loses. And yes, it may not only, it might not even, it might not affect your day. It might affect your week. It might affect the month. At some point, I'm going to tell my son the story of the Fiesta Bowl. <laughs> Miami gets to Ohio State. No, you don't want to teach him that. Don't want to teach that because I'm going to cry. I, but I need to teach I him. My, I need to teach him. My, I cried too. I need to teach him my suffering. Like he's no. like we're watching the national championship game, and we thought we'd won. We're they're shooting off fireworks already at the stadium. The players are celebrating, and then like ten seconds after the play is dead, Terry Porter. I'll never forget. The of name course, of the I know referee. Terry Porter. Terry Porter throws the flag. And ruins my entire cell. I I went from tears of joy to tears of sadness Yo, within seconds. Yeah, you know what? That pales in comparison. Being in the in the radio booth in Arizona. What was Zagaki like for that? I really didn't want to recall this. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I mean, listen, we got to tell first season. This is his first, season. The, the is his first season as the play by play, by play voice. Yeah, that's right. Of. The, the Miami Hurricanes. He was the color commentator. Well, I think that was his second. See, I think I think he also did the championship the year before. I'm pretty no, sure. No, he didn't. No, he did not do the championship. Uh, that was Mark Vandermeer. So Vandermeer was still there. I Vandermeer okay. was the vo yes, the okay. one, the Rose Bowl against against Nebraska. That was Mark Vandermeer. Josie was the color, hmm. and DBJ was sideline. Ah, uh, okay. Vandermeer went to Houston after calling he on a um. There was a Westwood one game where against Dolphins Ravens playoff game, and he was called in, and he did a good job. He did a great job. That the he, boom next year he was they wow. wanted him to be the the good, Texans voice. Good for him. So it was Joe Z's year. Joe Z had a great year. Joe Z DBJ had a great year. Mm -hmm. We're here. We're in the, we're in Arizona. We're in Arizona. Great call. Great game. Overtime. Mister Sharp makes the defensive play. I feel so bad for him. And, and, and also, by the way, it's been revealed since then because people have of really, course. They, they've broken down the footage. 
the ball was tipped. It was listen. So it shouldn't have, even if it was PI, it wasn't PI because the ball was tipped. First of all, it wasn't PI. He's but a, even if it was, it wasn't. So you have to understand we're elated, we're excited, and Joe Z's going on his like his thesis. Like he's saying back to back, like he's wow. been waiting yeah. for this moment. And I'm listening. I'm listening to him because I'm the producer of the broadcast. Mm-hmm. And then something tells me, hey, Vlad, maybe you might want to look down on the field. Terrible. Look down on the field. I see this yellow, yellow nastiness on the grass. A flag. And I had to. This is the worst part. I had to stop Joe Zagaki. Oh, no. You know when you've been waiting all your moment, like, to give this. And I had to stop him. Like, he's he's in the middle. He's in the middle middle of what he's been wanting to say. All this time, as the as the voice of the Miami Hurricanes for a championship, I had to stop him. And point to him, and Joe goes, "Oh no, what's going on? Why is there a flag on the field?" And then oh, no. the rest is history. The rest is history. Say. Like, dude, there's oh. no way that team was gonna come back and win. They were had shirts on, they had hats on. They thought they sucked. They thought they won. You're going to come back 15 seconds later to say there was a penalty? You, know, you know who I felt the worst for was uh, was Willis McGahee because he had, he had already suffered that awful injury like earlier in the game. And then I, I don't even know. I You know, I think I did ask him about it years later, but I can't exactly remember what he said about it. But I would imagine he was probably wa- like watching or at least somebody was telling him what was happening in the game and then find out like, man, I suffered this awful injury. And then I thought we were going to win the championship and we didn't. Oh, I felt so bad. By the way, this is a valid point. Someone says, hey, so Vlad was with WQAM back then. How old is Vlad? Like, I know you're somewhere between 30 and 60. Like, I'm not exactly that's sure. A, that's, that's great. That's that's a great, that's a great, um, that's a great uh, mean and, and average right there. You uh, and, I'm 46. You and Dan Day are very much alike in that, where I don't know, like, they, like same thing. Dan Dan Day could be anywhere between 21. Dan's in his 30s. Dan is his 30s. I'm 46. I, I don't, I don't I've done three bids. I think he's in his 30s. I think he might be in his 40s, or he might be in his teens. I, I don't know. I've done three bids with QAM. That was the first bid. That was the 97 to 03 bid. Yeah. I, I guess I'm I'm technically on my second bid, because I think I, at some point I either got laid off or furloughed. I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't, even, I don't even remember. It all kind of runs together. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, it all just goes together. It all just but runs yeah, together. it's three bits. I've done yeah. that, came back, then COVID, and then after COVID. There you go. So, yeah. Well, and I, I briefly worked with you uh, after. Remember, on, you remember Onside Radio? No, at, right oh, that's COVID. right. Well, yeah, that was yes, 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 yes. We were in Miami before in Miami. We were. That That's why it's like. I'm not, I'm not, and I know that this is obviously a better time for the club because they got Messi, they got Luis Suarez, but it's like, you and me are OGs. Like, we, we were there during the first season of right. the club, but back when, but like, back when they acquired Gonzalo Higuain, we had to pretend that was a big deal. Like, you know, we, we had to pretend that was a, now, now everybody's spoiled, they got Messi. Of course. We were OGs. You know, we were there when there was no Messi, when they were begging. When Messi was but a dream, like I, people were talking about, maybe someday Messi that was will come. yeah, that was the talk at that. That time. was the talk, and I'm like, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. And then I I saw it and I believed it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Dan is in his 40s. Dan might be 40. He was in late 30s, early 40s. I don't know, but... man. I mean, I'm I'm 39. I feel like he's older than me. Yeah, I think he's in his 40s. Yeah, yeah, we don't, you know, Creole don't crack, man. Apparently not. We don't crack, but we take breaks. We do. We'll be back here on Tobin and Leroy Show, AM 560 Sports, WQAM.
15 minutes of heat is sponsored by Kendall Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Start the new year in a new ride with no payments for 90 days. Kendall Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram.com. So, as we know, the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to be really short handed tonight, Leroy, but hey. the Heat might be shorter handed. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. Well, and Bam, Bam. out of IO is questionable with a lower back bruise. So we also and that's have that not even knowing what's going on with Dunks. Yeah, he's day to day. Spolster said, but the back, the back is a weird thing, dude. Because you could you could loosen up, you could go out and feel great, and one jump and Joe to your back, you back to square one. So, Ugh. like backs are tough. I'm scared of two things in basketball: backs, bone bruises, and the third one is foot injury oh yeah like remember when yao ming started to have the foot injuries well it's up. all big Eel guys Eel, right thing. KD, yeah. big guys yeah KD. yeah odin 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 had some of that vlad in him he came into <laughs> the league at 47 <laughs> benjamin button he was 18 yeah. first. Hey, Why dude, like <laughs> hey vlad that dude looked old as hell and he yeah. was like no really really i'm 20 oh greg <laughs> odin yeah i mean he was you know I remember That's watching what was he? He was at uh, Ohio State, right? Ohio yeah. State. I remember and then, watching him in college. I'm like, well, why do they have like a 38 year old on the team? Right. Has ever has it been an organization that's been cursed more than the Portland Trailblazers? Like you could have had KD, injuries. but you took no. You could have had KD, mm-hmm. but you took Odin. Right. You could have had Jordan. Yeah. Right. You took Sam Bowie. <laughs> Worked yeah. Out great. Wow. Worked out great. And they picked two team. guys that were injury plagued. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, keep in mind though. At that time, at that time, the most important thing in the league was a big. It was a big man. Yeah, it was right. a big man. So everybody chased that big. And do, now. Do you think now, we're, are we ever going to evolve? Well, the big men are important. Me. But the big men are important, but they have to be able to shoot in most cases. Like, well, they have to be able to hit the, the outside. Now, now, it's all about wings. Yeah, It's all true. about length. Yeah, yeah. It's all about ball skills as a big. Right. But here's the thing. Stop acting like these people get it right all the time. Wasn't Jokic the second rounder? Yeah. Okay. It's Stop. a little trickier with foreigners, though. Sometimes it's Yeah, hard. come on, man. Like, you, you see that. You're not thinking that's what that's going to become what it became. Yeah. You're it's right. You're There's right. no athleticism. There's nothing. You're, like, you're not yeah, seeing that. The guy's playing hey. in, like, Serbia. It's but that's, But here's the other thing. I've always got on the heat about this. You know, Jovic has been a pro longer than some of the pros you got on your team. Why does he need to recondition in Sioux Falls? He already been a pro. Mm. Right? He already been playing against grown-ass men. That's true. So I would say, granted, his skill set needed to improve, right? He needed to... His defensive side of it, because they don't play no defense in Europe, right? <laughs> but but it's almost hard to believe that you can't you can trust Hikes, who played four years of college basketball, over Jovic, a guy who played three or four years against grown ass men. Right? It's something different, Vlad. It's something different when you go into a a professional league. I played with Ozzy Newsom my rookie year. Wow. Ozzy Newsom and Clay Matthews. No, no, the dad. Their first year in the NFL, I was eight years old. And now I'm blocking Clay oh my Matthews. God. That's crazy. Wait, 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 you played four years in college, right? Yeah. So when you went, so when you went got to the league, you were 21. 22, 23, 20, 21? 20, 21. 21. And they got in the league when you were eight. So they eight. that means 13, 14, 14 years, right? Wow. Yes. So, so, so understand this. As a 21, 22 year old, I go into the league playing against people that my uncle and my dad was raving about. 
You're playing with good grown men. That played played and started first years in the league was in the 70s. I, mean, I know I know a lot of people experienced Wait, that. First when years in the league was in the 70s. Yeah. Be, you, know, no. you think about there, there's there's like 20 year olds, 21 year olds in the league Before now when who, were, who were not yeah, who were not born when LeBron James started his career, and now they're playing with and against LeBron. That's why he was number one. That's why he was number <laughs> one. That's why he's the good of all good. But, but yeah, so so you get so you get into the I get into the league, and I'm seeing Ozzie Newsom, right? I'm seeing, you know, when you go to Chicago, I think Walter played two more years. Right. I'm seeing, you know, guys when I was a kid, right? That's that's like, you got to take a deep breath. For sure. Because yeah. I'm glad. Think about this. I'm 21 years old. We go uh, pass pro. I got to block a grown ass man. <laughs> so just imagine. Guy if I'm, I'm, eight, I'm, eight, eight, years, eight. I'm eight, yeah. think I'm eight years old and he's 21 and I'm blocking him. So do you feel do you feel like you're the eight year old again when you're when you're about to block in your mind? Are you like, wow, like eight year old you is like, oh my god, I'm blocking no, this guy I that I watch. I was thinking I ain't about to go out here and get old man. Yeah. You know what I mean? They do get stronger, the old men. Like, dude, dude, Clay Matthews Sr. played forever. Yeah. And and, and it's amazing when people say Clay Matthews and you're thinking Green Bay Clay Matthews. I'm not. Right. You're you're thinking about the dad. Yeah. (laughs) Or, Or how about this? I played with the guy that got rid of me. Who was that? Ozzie Newsom. Oh yeah, he became right. the yeah. president, the player. Yeah. Right. Think about that. Had enough Leroy. Chew on that. Wow. So you want to talk about crazy and how I look at professional sports and how much I respect guys that play as long as UD and LeBron. Mm-hmm. Wait. Right? Wait. The guy that the guy that you played with, your teammate, got rid of you. Yep. Cold world. So. That means he were played for a while. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. But I thought, yeah, yeah, that's that's damn. Think about that. Think that's about a crazy that. world. Yes, yes. So when you talk about all the ins and outs of professional sports, and when I tell y'all, you know, all these different little things that go on or how players feel, I come from a place of like experiencing a lot of stuff. It, does it ever like start to feel maybe I, I don't know I don't know what the right word for it is routine like when, when you're thinking about like okay like you show up to work training camp like I I might be cut during the season I might no, be tra- like do I, you ever get used to that or is that always a jarring can I, thing? Can I say this? Yeah, please. I never in my career thought it was possible based on my uh, production and what I was to the team until it actually happened. And they Mm. told me this had nothing to do with your ability. This was about money. Right. Which is usually how it goes. Yeah. Right. And, and then I went to Carolina and Carolina said, we're going to pay you your same contract, but you're just an insurance policy because Tim Bianca Batuga got hurt and Anthony Johnson was the running back. If Anthony Johnson works out, then we not going to use you. So I just learned the plays, practice, got some spot time or whatever. And then it just so happened that the week that they decided that they were just going to run with Anthony Johnson, right? Minnesota needed a running back. So I went straight from Carolina to Minnesota. And I was there for the rest of my career. So wow. I lived in four cities in three months. Wow. I lived in Cleveland, <laughs> Baltimore, Jeez. Carolina, and Minnesota in three I hope months. You rented and didn't buy. No, well, guess what? Here's what happened. Yeah. When we went wow. to Baltimore, when we went to Baltimore, there was a builder. He said, if you buy a house and then you're not there for a year, we'll buy the house exactly. Oh, you know, okay. Right. Okay. But that here's works. the problem. You put the deposit down on the house. The house wasn't built yet when they got rid of me. 
Oh, no. Jeez. So I had to wait until the house was built. Okay. So then I go to Carolina. Carolina, I think you can, they can put you up in a, a, a hotel. I stayed in a hotel for five weeks. Then after the fifth week, I say, okay, fine. I go and sign a lease on Friday before a game, start moving my stuff in on Monday, right? Hadn't lived there. On Tuesday, I was going to Minnesota. So Damn. I went back. I went back. They wouldn't give me my deposit back. Uh, I really? I did not sleep. <laughs> no. I did not sleep one night in that apartment. Wow. Right? So I went to oh. Minnesota. I got to Minnesota on Wednesday. And on Sunday, I was the running back for the Minnesota Vikings. Sunday. Wow. Right? I didn't know. They taught me about four or five plays. I hope they ran and those four or five plays a lot. No. Because <laughs> Brad, Brad Johnson was the quarterback because Warren Moon got hurt. Oh, man. Brad Johnson was the quarterback. And he'll go, Barbara, 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 Barbara. I'm like, Brad, what do purple mean? Brad. I had no idea. So you watching game film, and Brad is turning around telling me where to go. <laughs> right? Now, all that being said, I was only the second running back in Vikings history to have over 100 yards in their first game. And they go, how do you feel about that? I said, well, hopefully next week I can learn a few more plays. <laughs> That's great. So it was like those three months, I wouldn't wish that on nobody. Because not only that, you don't know, you know what the circumstances are. It really has nothing to do with your ability. Right. But you still, everybody's bringing you in as an insurance policy after that. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm like, am I ever going to play? Huh. But I played that first week. And here's the kicker. Three weeks before that, I was on Carolina's team playing <laughs> Minnesota. And that was two teams ago. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, dude. I'm wow. telling you. And that was it. That was my movement in all of my career. It happened in those three, wow. those three months. Jeez. Oh, that's wild, man. That's a crazy – I mean, I know obviously football players, people say, oh, they're paid so well and stuff. No, it's still it's dude, a crazy can life. can I tell you? Can life. I tell you? Yeah. I don't care how much you get paid or what your job is. It is hard to stay mentally in it. Yeah, sure. When you got to move that much. But it got to the – I was so excited to be on the field. Now, I will say this. I stayed in a hotel from November. I want to know from, yeah, November to January. Stayed in a hotel. They say, you want to rent a place? Nope. I'm staying right here in this extended stay. I don't trust nobody. Right? And, and the first 30 days I was there, 25 of those days, the high didn't reach zero. Oof. So this is all. Now keep in mind, I got clothes, cars, all over the damn country. Mm -hmm. And I got a place in Florida at the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to coordinate in between games. I'm flying like the game in on Sunday, right? Hold on. I can't stop laughing because some Dolphin Kane says, did Leroy poop in any of those hotel bathrooms? Oh, the ones I stayed in, yeah, they're mine. <laughs> they were yours, okay. <laughs> yeah, once I signed that, that, that's clear. mine. But, okay. but, but yeah, it 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 was it was it was a hell of a jump. See, you don't know the story. I don't I don't poop in public, and I have been known to drive from like after the season in in Cleveland. The very next day, I would drive down to New Orleans. And if I had to go, I would rent a hotel room. Okay, so as long as it's your hotel room, that is yes, your, it counts. Yes, okay. yes, okay. yes. And it so couldn't be no, place. it couldn't be no truck stop. 
Right. Yeah, of course. So it would cost me a hundred dollars to be to take a poop. I like for for me, like I reached like I when when I was when I was younger, I was like that. And obviously I'm I'm younger than you are, but when I I don't know if it was when I turned 30 or something, I just stopped caring. At a certain point, it's like I can go anywhere. I can go anywhere. Dude, because here's what I keep thinking of. Some of these bathrooms you go into, you gotta hold your breath. And I'm not putting my butt on that. I'm sorry. When you got to go, you got to go. No, no. Me and my body have an understanding. And in 55 years, it, it, don't, <laughs> it, it ain't failed me. Okay. So I don't know. Like, yeah, because guess what? I've never had to go during a football game. You know how people have to go in emergency poop or whatever? Outer. I've never had to do that. I've never had to. Like, no, never. In all my years of football, I've never had to stop playing football to go use a bathroom. Huh. Have you known? I mean, crowd has mentioned it, but have you known the players that have like gone on themselves in the in in battle? Larry no. Izzo. No. I know. Yeah, that people yeah. urine on no. themselves. No, I did, didn't. Do not. I I've never, I've never heard of that. And in fact, I very rarely, because you have to understand where, in most stadiums, there's a bathroom right at the end of the tunnel you come out of. Oh. So you're not going all the way back to the locker room. They probably made those just for Crowder. They knew Crowder's coming to town. We got to. Yeah, I, like I, I don't, dude. Listen, I don't. I, don't, I, I can't. I can't. Well, we can take a break. We'll wrap up the twelve o'clock hour when we come back here on AM five sixty Sports WQAM.
You know what? I like it. I love whenever I get an opportunity to host the show. So Tobin, he can yeah. take as many vacations as he wants to, but I'll admit, um, I've done a terrible job for the first two hours and 52 minutes because I, Leroy, and even Jay Fig is here, so Jay Fig can be mad at me as well. I have not wished Pat Riley a happy birthday. Like it's it's Pat Riley's birthday. I've gone two hours and fifty two minutes completely ignoring the fact that the greatest figurehead in the history of South Florida sports is celebrating a birthday today, and I have not been celebrating it on his behalf. We can all slick back our hair in honor of him. Well, yeah. not you and me, but <laughs> not Vlad either. <laughs> no. This is gonna be take the one most, for the team, like, guys. Take one for you. You're gonna slick your hair. She's got enough hair to slick back for all three of us. Yeah. Yeah. I got you guys. Oh. Have you, you always, JP, have you always had long hair? Always, actually. Um, I wasn't allowed to cut it till I was 15. You like Why? Rapunzel? Why? I was Rapunzel. I'm not even kidding. Because that was just kind of like Cuban tradition. I wasn't allowed to do. Really? Stuff like not, that. Not yeah. the, uh, the I, I wasn't even allowed to have year. highlights or anything. My my until daughter, after, yeah. my daughter, she cried when she had to get a haircut, and this was only the edges trimmed because. Oh well, I was when she was a baby till I can cut my hair. When she was a baby, she couldn't grow. She didn't grow hair, so everybody thought she was a boy, mm. right? And so when she got hair, don't touch my hair. And it's curly, but if you straighten it out, it's almost as it's long, long as yours. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, during senior year, I went a little crazy and I cut my hair all the way up to here to my shoulders. Oh, shoulder and yeah. everyone hated me, but I was living. <laughs> and then I did it like probably two more times until now. And I kind of don't really care about going back anymore. I, that was just something I had to get out of my system. Well, when but you now, have long hair and then you cut it short, it makes your head look bigger, right? It I does, mean, yeah. I don't know. I I felt like my head looked normal. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying because um, there, there's something about like the the hair to head ratio has to be just right. Right. So not for me, me, obviously. I don't know. Well, that's that was my problem. I felt like I had way too much hair. Right. So. Uh, yeah. So the, well, what, what you never what? know. Well, why does this dude in the uh, the Twitch chat keep saying that if the Heat lose tonight, he wants to throw hands with me? I mean, bring it on, Mark D. Heat, bring it on. Wow. But uh, I don't see. I just, uh, I just, I just want. Here, here's what I want, and here's what you have to understand. And I understand this with sports. Sometimes you can play your best game and not win. I mean, that's why they play seven game series in the playoffs. Right. But, but, but. I want them to at least look like there's a sense of urgency. Right. Right. I don't want to hear after the game, well, you know, we just need to do this and do that. It's been almost 70 games, dude. You should be there. Right. You should be getting ready for another phase of the season. That's the playoffs. Not still trying to figure it out. And that's the problem. That's the thing that, that I'm worried about is that, as you get to the time where everybody's honing into their playoff rosters and what they're going to do for the playoffs and getting ready for this and that, the Heat is trying, still trying to figure out what our roster is going to be. Yeah. And so uh, for everybody who thinks, oh, no, we just put Jimmy and Bam out there and then Tyler will come back and it'll be a – no, it doesn't work like that. It, it really doesn't. And so I'm worried about that. I'm worried about taking these blind – leaps of faith into something that you haven't seen enough to warrant a deep run into the playoffs. I like how someone said that it, if we had a band, the four of us, it'd be the burglar <laughs> and the baldy. Tate's tough, man. He's a legend. He's a legend. He's a legend. I'm going to last. The burglar and the baldies. The, the burglar and the baldies is stark. I <laughs> like it. <laughs> Uh, or, or, sounds or, like classic the, rock. Hey, or the baldies featuring the murderer. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know the, the feature, you you know, you 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 gonna be doing, you know, the the, she, the, she'd be singing, the right? She'd be, she'd be the front woman. Yeah, we band. we definitely put her up front. They, they hide right? me in the back, I'll be playing bass, maybe Vlad playing drums, Le Leroy shredding the guitar. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> I love it. Let's do it. <laughs> Band practice at 3 p.m. guys. Good. Oh, um man. so like yeah, I'm 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 worried. I'm worried that let's just think of it this way. Think of all the teams that are in the oh, same spot oh, as the Miami Heat, right? Think about all the teams that are in the same spot. The only other team that's struggling is Indiana's on a free fall. Yes. But they had some equity and wins, and they were up there. So the worst they could do is fall into the playing spot. Right. Which they're in right now. Indiana right. is a half game in front of the Heat in uh, seventh. The Heat are in eighth. The Heat have a game in hand, though, compared to Indiana. Which gets me very excited. Which doesn't get me excited at all. But you under, you see what I'm saying? So everybody else has been playing halfway decent basketball. Um, the other thing is, is that when you look at the schedule, the Heat was supposed to have the easiest schedule finishing out the season. Yeah. Right? I thought they'd be a top four seed. Ooh. Right. Because they'd run oh. out, they because I literally thought they'd run out like go 13 and two or you know, Ooh. 13 and five to finish the season. Yeah. Well, and even like a couple which is weeks not, ago, which is not which Vlad, eight, I was getting all which Vlad excited. is not unreasonable with the teams that they're playing. Then they lost to the Wizards. Yeah, but they their record, they have some hard games, man. Like okay, they play the Cavaliers tonight. Who they play... also banged up and don't. Right. And and they're gonna get healthy because they already got a spot. And um, yeah, I, I've been calling this this player Fatty McDunks. I gotta stop calling him Fatty McDunks because Zion Williamson. He looks slim and he balls. He yeah. He's yeah. slim. He's balling. Did you see that alley oop last yes. night? Yes. 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 Did you yes. see what? He you see how high he got? And then you saw. I was like, "Wait, is that he muscle? almost he almost had Those to are... duck? He almost had to duck from hitting his head on the rim. He's pretending the rim was a Big Mac. <laughs> he could have took a bite out of, but but still, <laughs> like. So yeah, so I'm you know I just want to see him play good basketball, right? Ooh, and then they got to play the Cavaliers again. They got some tough games, man. Yeah. They yeah. have they have some tough games than Golden State. And here's here's the problem though. Here's where you fall into trouble. You playing mm-hmm. these Western Conference teams, where it's do or die. Also, the Warriors are are yeah, life yeah. and death right now. Yeah, they're in the play. Rockets. You have you go in the Houston. Yeah. You play. Yeah, this is yeah. not, it's not they, easy. Ugh. Yeah. Get so tea time's ready in uh, first round territory. Get ready to play some golf. I know Leroy's ready. Yeah, I am. Let's we take a break them. before we get. We we'll should take a break, guys. Yeah, I'm surprised Jay Fig break. hasn't been yelling at us. She yet. has been. You just have I have been on the chat. Oh, I've been ignoring the <laughs> private chat. My bad. Why well, we'll does continue. everyone do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I I had the I wanted to see what mean stuff uh, Dade South was saying in the chat. So we, we got one o'clock hour coming up. AM 560 Sports WQAM.
It's, I feel like this is a spring break MTV throwback. What? Is that what you're going for here? Of course, just, this has all know? been. They've all been. Um, they've all been spring break. This is so. the first one. Then, that but I like, was. I was on? always ex Tina back then. So are you, you a like her more Christine? Than Britney? I loved her more than Britney. <laughs> well, here's the thing: Christine Aguilera is a better singer. Britney yeah. Spears yeah. was a better performer. She was a better right. pop star. So right, so she did yeah. concerts and stuff like that, and the dancing or whatever, and the music was yeah. good. But Christina Aguilera can sing. Yes, correct. But you know and me, so, I love vocalists. So so I had yeah, all her so CDs. It's almost her like if you went tapes. to a, if you went to a Christina Aguilera concert, it would be at the Hard Rock um, Hotel. If you went to a Britney Spears, it would be at the Hard Rock. Uh, stadium. Stadium. You see what I mean? That's the difference. Yeah. Well, yes, I still feel like Christina could do a stadium because she has that. Nah, chance. Christina could get stadium. V. You think Christina exactly. could do stadium. Yes, yeah, she could do stadium. Absolutely. Maybe not back then, but now like, I not. feel like. Uh, yeah. But no, she still no no. Okay, well back then they were doing arenas. Right, they were exactly. doing arenas. They both they could do really arenas. Doing stadiums back. Then. They both could do arenas. Yeah. She was actually she finished her residency in Vegas last year. Oh. Britney. I think this Britney did. Year. No, Christina too. She did one too. Yeah, oh, okay. I really wanted That's to. That's why she left the uh, voice. She left the voice to do that, right? That was a long time ago, Leroy. Is is Britney crazy? Like again? more than was ten years ago. She put out like a hey, like a weird video. We're not. We don't want to say crazy. She's crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't say crazy. She's local, but she's not crazy. Okay, but Britney. She's going through it. Uh, she's gone through it. A little too much, but mm. but Britney, listen back then, spring break. Oh, yeah, it was Britney. Britney was TRL, she was she was the TRL Jay queen. Fink, did you have a favorite boy band? Like, where did you stand on? Because there was always the debates Backstreet Boys and... in sync. You had you had a 98 degrees, was trying to slide into the top spot for a so, while. So, I've always been in between Backstreet Boys and in sync, and I've got to say, I don't know why, but. It was bye 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 for me. Yeah, I was. That was a massive hit. I loved See, them, me, and I actually saw them at the Emirate Arena. Oh, like in 2019, after, like, I want to say. Oh, okay, 2019. Yeah, right before COVID, I saw them, and I, it was I feel like Joey Fatone has not aged gracefully. Hey, listen, if it's not for Justin, I don't think none of these uh none of these bands, none of these boy yeah. bands win. But are they coming like, back? What's going on? Yes, they're supposed to be. They're all coming back. Yeah, because, but, but and um and and Justin Timberlake is on starting tour this year. I know. I'm right. really excited for that. Right, but if it's not for him, none, right, he is the biggest oh, star of all the boy. All the boy. All, yeah. Actually, all sorry, I got him. I got him mixed up for some reason. Um, I actually my Backstreet Boys is who I saw. That's who you saw. Sorry. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. In sync, but I love. loved In Sync. I loved In Sync. You loved him so and much. And it was, and it was only, it was because of Justin Timberlake, right? <laughs> no, no. Because nobody else, nobody else, anybody from the Backstreet Boys, like, did anything. Well, they, 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 like the Backstreet, like they, none of them, like they, they had got, the Backstreet Boys. What I respected about them, I feel silly even saying that, but what I yeah. respected about them was, I felt like all like five of them could do solos. Where In Sync, it was like. Justin and that JC guy, but like the the other guys, I don't even think could sing. They were just kind Joey, of there standing around. Joey Fatone, like, Joey Fatone, he had to be somebody cousin, cousin. right? Exactly. He <laughs> <laughs> no, like, was always they, one big. There's always one big guy in every boy grand. No, but usually he's the deep voice. Well, you know, uh, okay. like even sad. boy, even oh, boys yeah. to men had the one guy. I don't know if he could sing, but he was the deep voice. Right, hey, girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please stop. <laughs> so, I know I shouldn't have left. I know I shouldn't have left you. I know I shouldn't have left you like that. And then, I was wrong, girl. I'm sorry. And then Please, the intro, back. intro to the real singers. And then you know, <laughs> love me again, like you. baby. <laughs> baby. Baby, please take me back. Yeah. Can I do some, can I do some headlines here? These headlines are yes. driven by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. That. Got to tell you, let me just say something. Y'all see how quick I got back, right? You were yeah. happy, weren't you? No. So I went there, dropped off the rental, picked
picked up my car. I was out. Bing, 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 bing. Done. Good for you. That never happens. It's always a hold up with somebody, right? Yeah. Oh, always. In and out. The lady wanted to check the car. I say, bill me. Ain't nothing wrong with that truck. Unless Good. I'm out. Do, do they give you like the courtesy wash before you leave? No. No? I didn't care. I got they put guy. that um did they put those those tarps on the on the oh man on that's the... on the hey when y'all get oh, done move things. your tarp right <laughs> I don't want to have to clean that my tarp, man. Get my tarp out it's a man damn slip and slide when I get in my truck <laughs> right I hate <laughs> yeah, yeah get those tarps out man and the paper <laughs> on the floor <laughs> and then the paper, paper the tarp what are you paper workers like <laughs> what are you doing to my car where you need to put a tarp over the like right I'm like. Ain't nothing that was working on my car had anything to do with the engine. Why y'all tarping my car up? The seat, I don't know. just the driver's seat. Yeah. And, and then they 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 leave the little the little thing in like the keychain, like the little uh, the cardboard thing that I guess like oh, yeah. the number, the number your put car the number was. On it. They put nah, the they, number on there. I hate that tear, thing. They tear it off. Good. They well, sometimes they forget. They yeah, they, the they're supposed to the tear car, it. Though. They do leave the number in the car. You gotta take that. Well, they, so, they leave the little take sticker your that stuff tells with you when you. to bring it back. It bothers yeah. Leroy. What now? They didn't take their things out of their things out of your car. Oh, so see, I see where you're getting at. By the way, Leroy, I noticed uh, the the, li the line the, the line has yeah. Go ahead. No, the, the line, line has moved since earlier in the show. It was it was uh, Cavaliers were two and a half point favorites. Cavs are now one and a half point favorites. So I guess a little. Little, no, uh, you know why? You know why? Favor. Why? Because, because they're like, banged up too. Yeah, they got a lot of guys out. Yeah, they're even more banged up than we are. So the Heat are one and a half point underdogs in Cleveland tonight. You got the. Does uh, that the matter Panthers. with the Heat? No, they could be ten point favorites, and they would still make you sweat it out. Right. So you got the Panthers are back in action tomorrow night, 730. They're going to host the Nashville Predators. Uh, Inter-Miami going to be back in action on Saturday. They're on the road at the New York Red Bulls. Uh, spring training, Marlins and Mets scoreless top of the first. By the way, we did have um, – today was the opener, right, for Major League Baseball in South Korea. I, I feel like tonight. for a it's sport – tonight, right? It's tonight. No, it happened no, no, already. No, it, it happened, happened already. already. It, was, it, was, it was like early – so the uh Dodgers the Dodgers, and Padres. yeah, the Dodgers beat the Padres five to two. Just I feel like for a sport that used to be known as the national pastime, right? As American as apple pie. Oh, it's a foreign pastime. Well, now I've, I I feel hey. kind of angry that they open up the season in Korea. They might as uh, well go to North Korea. They did it. They've done it the last play in the game is uh is 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 Asian. Fair. Come on now. Japanese though, right? He's Japanese, but yeah. Should have played it in Tokyo. But here's the funny thing. You know what's the messed up part, guys? What? You know what I hate about this, Leroy? What? You, I, because this has happened before. I think they're gonna come back and start and and still play spring training games. You're right. This one counts, but they still have spring training left to play. What in the what? Yeah. Why? Cause, cause, why? Because the rest of the season doesn't open up for and a week and a half. Well, then what? Week. That's and this is why they shouldn't. They should not have started. In like in Korea or in in, in outside or the United States, they should have they should have did a whole series, and that be the opening series for them. Yeah, yeah, because now yeah. why do that? And then then when they return, they're gonna have because they I'm still gonna, gonna have spring training can games. Can that's tell you that's can dumb. I, can I tell you why? Why? Because oh, yeah. even though they start early, right, they still don't have to go down to their twenty five man roster yet. Mm, okay, I hadn't thought about that. So. You still probably working out a couple little kinks or whatever. Yeah. Right? Like I'm telling you, one of the most amazing things, and I'm taken aback by this every time we go to training camp. There's 200 people out there. 200 baseball players. Right? 200. Hmm. And before camp is over, you figuring out where you going. The bigs, single A, double A, triple A, right? And the young kids, there's a lot of young guys, right? They all out there, and they don't even put, they don't even, they ain't even close to a, a uniform. They just give them like a jersey, right? <laughs> a jersey <laughs> with big numbers. They spell your last name wrong on the back, probably. <laughs> no name. You ain't got no, no name, name yet. Oh. No. So they and reuse they, those year to but, year, and they got the reusable jersey. But the other thing that I'm amazed at is when when you think of baseball, right? 
these guys are working all day, yeah. right? Hitting, then the pitchers come out, then the fielding, then lunch, then batting, then hitting again, then outfield work. It's all from the second we got there to the second we left. There was baseball on the field. Yeah. And, that and was all the like pitches, five minute drive all the pitches COVID, are right? mooses. All the pitches are mooses now. There's no more uh Tim Lincecums. Oh. They're all They're... six four, six five. Just tall. I mean, holy smokes. Yeah, I've only seen one moose in person, I think, in my entire life in Alaska. Johnson? Uh two, then I guess. Yeah. Actually, no, I've never seen Moose Johnson in person, only on TV. But yeah, I like that. All right, we'll continue the one o'clock hour when we come back. We got Jay Fig in the house. We got Vlad. We are Birderer and the Baldies right here. Tobin and Leroy Show, AM 560 Sports, WQAM.
15 minutes of heat is sponsored by Kendall Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Start the new year in a new ride with no payments for 90 days. Kendall Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram.com. But as we know, if the season ended today, Miami Heat are a play in team. But Leroy, do you think the NBA is a little bit concerned about this whole play in thing? Because you look at the Western Conference, and right now, the Suns, KD, Lakers, LeBron, Golden State, Steph, they, they would all be play-in teams right now. Like, there's a chance you may get none of those superstars, you know, biggest superstars in the league in an actual playoff. Do you think the NBA, we talked about this a little bit while you're picking your car up, do you think that they're regretting this play-in thing right now? No, because in, the great thing about sports is you eat what you earn. And that's never changed in sports. If you don't earn it, you don't get it. The only thing that that's happened to in recent sports history is Florida State. Right. Yeah. Right? Which is another reason why I'm annoyed at the NCAA. I don't care what the, 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 the NCAA has completely lost the plot. Like they, they can't <laughs> like they they can't they can't regulate anymore. I mean, college football, it's become so big now. And they were not prepared for NIL, and it's obvious they've been reacting, trying to react, but now they can't react because right. they keep losing in court right. and conference realignment. Right. Like th th there's a chance that if they don't, you know, completely bend over for the SEC and the Big Ten, the SEC and the Big Ten can say, "We don't need you. We're leaving. Like we're gonna, we can do our own playoff. We can regulate ourselves. We don't need you regulating us Here, anymore." Here's the, here's the crazy thing: that Alabama beat Georgia. But I bet you, if you took a poll, everybody would still think Georgia was better. So why do, not? Yeah, so I so why I not do. put now? Why not put them in over over Alabama? Yeah, a lot of people thought they would get it. Well, I think what happened was since they could only they could only put in four, um, you know they they really wanted to put Alabama in, uh, and they were the SEC champions. But they couldn't put Alabama in without also putting in Texas because Texas beat right. Alabama. So right. that's what cost Florida State. So they like. So the so the the playoff committee was like, okay, maybe we can live without Georgia, but we have to put Alabama in. But we can't put Alabama in without putting Texas in. Then if we put Texas in, we don't have a spot for Florida State. Sorry, Florida State, your quarterback is gone. Too bad. Again, you could justify whatever decision you make, right? Right. And I could justify not pulling Alabama, putting Alabama in, by saying you lost to one of the top four teams you're out, mm -hmm. right? And, of course, that would piss the SEC off. Yeah. But at the same time, let's not act like the SEC has always been a powerhouse. No. Because I remember when I was in school, the SEC was blah. Yeah. Right? It was more about the Big Ten, um, Notre Dame, and the um pack 12 right right so it 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 goes back and forth so i think if you do sports like sports and you earn it right it shouldn't matter what conference you're from but just like the kids these conferences want assurances if you want us what? to sign and commit to this, here's the insurance. So guess what? What I've heard is it's going to be three Big Ten teams, three SEC teams, two ACC teams, and four at largest. I don't know if they've actually broken down the number. May maybe they have behind That's closed doors, but... But I, I know I know the SEC and Big Ten they get a bigger revenue split now from the playoff. Like they they get a higher they get a higher percentage and more money per team than the uh, than the Big Twelve, ACC, and the independents and and the right. you know, the group of five. And, so they, and what is the Big Twelve going to be? They're they're in the others. Well, now. the Big Twelve the Big Twelve actually gets a little less than the ACC. I, I saw like no, they, but, they get... but what I'm what I'm saying is, and and the only reason why that happened is the last time you decided that Clemson was winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right. True. 
Yeah. Um, well, no, this is this is the new deal. They they just signed a new deal with ESPN for the playoff. Well, and and here's the other thing. The reason why is because your two teams are going to the SEC. Right. Yeah. The the only two teams that really matter there. I mean, they got like they're bringing in Utah, which is Utah's now like their gram their their glamour program. It's like yeah, Utah's had a really good team in recent years. How many times they've been in the playoff? None. Like like Utah, Utah, they haven't really accomplished anything except they've had some really good defenses and they've had some good regular season wins. Right. So yeah, it, it, it's it's um I I don't I want it to be a bigger. I think eight is enough. Right. Well, it, it is only going to keep getting bigger because they they're going to start doing twelve. And then in two years, they're going to open it up to 14. In 2026, they're going to start having 14. Here's here's what problems you're going to fall into. What? Right? How far down the line can you go? This year was a unique situation. But if you get past eight, do those teams really have a chance? Like when you get to the... The end of the top 10. Do those teams have a chance to beat in any of the top teams? Uh, I mean, probably not. Because um, we're, we're yeah, talking about, I keep understand. in mind, keep in mind, we're talking about schools like Cincinnati. Right. I mean, it, yeah, like if, if you match up Cincinnati against Georgia, it's probably going to be very ugly. teams like Tulane who, who've won their, you know, conference and, and have like two losses in three years. Um, you know, you think about teams like that, right? Do they have a chance? Right. Like, this isn't Boise State. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm just wondering if you add too many teams, are you diluting the the college playoff? I mean, part of the way that I look at it is um that and you're right about the whole diluting thing, but I one reason why I'm okay expand uh, enough is enough at a certain point. I don't want to see any more than really any more than 12. It's going to be 14 in a couple of years. So we've already reached a point where everybody's opting out of the bowl games that are not college football playoffs. So at least right. like if you have a 14 team playoff now and a 12 team, the next couple of years, you think at least all I, of the name, you, you're making a terrible assumption. Okay. People, I, I'm assuming players will not opt out of playoff games. Is my we, assumption. we have here. And I'm going to use this example, and I don't want to. Okay. Kids are kids. They have their handlers, their family members, their whatever. Right? You're telling me you're not going to have another situation like what happened in Miami? You The, the what, Florida State lost 66? No, no, no. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the basketball team. Where oh, even they just went to the final four, dude. Yeah, last year. Why, yeah. right? You have all of the incentive in the world to come back and play. So I get what they're trying to do. But let me ask you Does Marvin Harrison Jr. play if they're in the playoff? You can say well, yes. Yes. I would like to think so. Yes. You, you, I, you I would like, think so. We, but, but see, you're making an assumption that I'm not willing to make because you have to understand it's not just the kid, right? It's the people in his ear. So what's going to happen is your team is going to be at the eighth seed. You're going to be in the college playoff, right? And they're going to say, your handler is going to say, Y'all don't have a chance to win. Don't risk three more games. Dang. Right. You, can, you can't tell me. This is – it's not it the players. Bad. But yeah. this is what's going to happen. Like, you're trying to change the circumstances in which these kids will make different decisions when, to the kids, it's just football. We play football. It's his advisors, family members saying, you don't need to risk it. I'm thinking to myself, and I know it's a different time. It was never a thought that I didn't play in a bowl game. Yeah. Like, it's football. 
Like it's football. We've seen guys, if you're good enough, we've seen guys get banged up and get a little hurt and still, hell, Willis McGay, he got drafted in the first round and he, he couldn't even play. It's it's crazy how like normalized it's become because I, I, right. I to me maybe I'm wrong about this but like the I first, look at some like, of these guys and I say dude you need to play well it been like I I remember and however many years ago it was like the first like really high profile opt out in like you know a quote unquote New Year's Six bowl game it wasn't Christian McCaffrey who opted out of like a Rose Bowl uh, and that that was like on a kind of unexpected at the time people talk oh maybe he's gonna opt out but. It was not normal back then to opt out of a New Year's Six game. Even if you weren't playing for a national championship, right. it's a New Year's Six game. You didn't opt out of those. He opted out of a Rose Bowl. But now it's like you expect players like if they Florida State, in the Florida State playoffs, had half their team opting out of the Orange Bowl. And it's right. pretty normal right. now. And, and here's what I would say. If you're not going to be a top five pick, you shouldn't be opting out. Because you can't do nothing but improve your standing. Yeah, right. Right. And 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 I always thought of this: if I got to play on the road in the Rose Bowl at that time, all eyes were on me. Yes. Even eyes that didn't want to run it back or need a running back. You talking about those? The Rose Bowl. The uh, sugar bowl, the orange bowl, the cotton bowl, the pea. You watching those games, they're standalone games. Mm -hmm. so people watching those games go, huh, let's kick the tires on him. He looked like he yeah. got something we might like. Yep. Right? Now that the attitude is, I'm going to go in the first two rounds anyway. I'm out, What's the point? Yeah, and a lot of players get bad advice on that. You talk bad about advice. entourages. It's the a lot handlers. Of bad advice. It's the handlers. You see yeah. all them guys from Florida State? That um, that opted out. I'm thinking they ain't got that many damn first rounders. Yeah, apparently they've got uh, somehow they have 34 first round picks. Right. So yeah, it, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that it happened to Florida State. Right. Um, they still deserve to be there, even if you was gonna get your ass kicked. They would have gotten their asses kicked. But guess what? Here's the deal. Real. Here's the deal. Let, let's be fair. You don't know how many of those kids opted out because of what happened, right? Um, but also, it, but that also kind of paints a pretty ugly picture for their culture, though, because I mean, jo Georgia, right. Georgia did have some opt outs, but not nearly as many. And Carson Beck played in the game. It was like Florida State's players, which were mostly mercenaries who came over in the transfer portal. They were like, "Well, if we're not in the playoff, I'm opting out." Whereas Georgia showed up and said, no, we want to win this freaking football game and let's destroy these guys. And they did. But and and that's just it. Like, like here, here's the deal. Before you were a football player, before you got to Florida State, Georgia, or whatever, one of the reasons why you got there was not because of your skill set, but your competitiveness. Yeah. Right? And so at any point in time, if you show me that your competitiveness wasn't real, then I'm going to question your abilities. Because sometimes you got to fight through stuff. Sometimes you're not going to be the best athlete on the field. Mm -hmm. And you got to be able to compete. You got to be able to go out there and say, I don't care that I'm not the best. I'm going to compete. That's what's getting lost in sports. People don't understand that that's what you were first. No matter what sport you were as a kid, as a high school or as a college player, you were a competitor. That has to take precedent over everything. And it's not. And so when these kids come out or when I see situations where I have to question not his ability, but his competitiveness, because you know what? If a basketball player get dunked on, his competitiveness will say, that ain't happening again. Or you would just say, well, everybody get dunked on. I ain't even worried about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I right. We, we, know, we know guys that are competitors, and we know guys that are athletes. Well, we're going to wrap up this, uh, what is today, Wednesday? This Wednesday episode of the Tobin and Leroy Show when we come back here on AM560 Sports WQAM.
Yeah, the NFL uh, continues to try to make the game safer, special teams plays, kickoff plays. They're also making the game just more damn confusing, Leroy. So I was just <laughs> reading about reading about the new hybrid uh, kickoff rules. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I guess I kind of, I mean, I'm sure this is like to, you know, less, less uh, running starts and momentum and collisions and stuff. So now um, the ball uh, under this proposal, the ball will be kicked from the kicking team's 35, which I think is what they already do. 10 members of the kicking team will line up on the receiving team's 40 instead of lining up right by the kicker. At least six members of the receiving team must be lined up on the receiving team's 35. At least three or more must align between the receiving team's 35 and 30. One or two players may be lined up in the landing zone, which is between the goal line and the receiving team's 20. Uh, The play begins when the kick is caught or strikes the ground in the landing zone, which is new between the goal line and the 20. If the ball doesn't make it to the 20, the receiving team gets the ball at its own 40. If it enters the end zone on the fly, the receiving team gets the ball on its own 35. If the ball hits the ground in the landing zone and rolls into the end zone, the receiving team gets the ball at its own 20. If the ball goes out of bounds, the receiving team gets possession at its own 40. There can be no returns from the end zone. And and send some... The kicking team is now lined up in the other side of the field, Leroy. You know how sometimes you're you – know, this happens a lot in the NFL when it's windy and the ball won't stay on the tee. Mm-hmm. So you can't like you can't bring a player back to hold it anymore because they've all got to be lined up on the other side of the field. So if the ball can't stay on the tee because of wind, they're introducing NFL-approved kickoff sticks where the ball is held between sticks so that you don't have to bring a player oh, like back to hold what it. They practice, what they practice on the side. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I know, I know what a kickoff stick is. So you have kickoff it's sticks. Another and, uh, another reason to make a kicker a loner. That's right. Exactly. You, <laughs> you don't even want a teammate to come by and hold. So all of this, like I know, and listen, I, I'm I'm all for you know making the game safer, and I know kickoffs they they've been dangerous plays historically, and the NFL is always trying to find ways to tweak it. D- does it sound Leroy like this is something that is going to make the game safer without changing it too much? Where the, the, to me, the big takeaways are the play doesn't start until the ball hits the ground or is caught, which is a big change. You don't have people like running full speed across the field. Now. Here's what I'm going to tell you is going to happen. What? Okay. And we've already seen this. The high, high kick where the ball lands on the five. Right? Yeah. This is what teams are going to do because I have never seen this before ever where – teams get tackled inside the 15-yard line on kickoffs. And that is because the ball is being kicked so damn high, you moved everybody closer, right? And you can't run the wedge. Mm -hmm. So I just see them kicking the ball high and short and trying to get them inside the, the 25. That makes sense. So So it it adds like a new strategy to it. Yeah. So that's what they've been doing. Um, nobody returns it out of the end zone anyway because you get it on 35. It seems too penal. You see what I mean? Yeah. So from that standpoint, that has been eliminated anyway. Uh, but now, basically what they're doing is they're trying to eliminate the play and they're trying to give the defensive team or the kickoff team an opportunity to create a play where you just kick it to the five and you go make a play. Hmm. Now I will say this. If you play that game and you miss, there's going to be a boatload of touchdowns because you can't even go until the ball's caught. Right. Right. Yeah, That's right. That's right. So, so yeah, you're exactly. You're going to have a boatload. So, more, which so I, you're, I think talking about, exciting. you're talking about guys just standing there. Right. And, Devin Hester's and then gonna taking off when the ball, when the ball's kicked off, when the ball is caught. So it's going to be interesting to see how the kickoff team does it, right? Are they going to, because here's the deal. The other scam is, right? You kick it and land it in the field of play and it goes out of the end zone. Now, you get it only on the 20. Right. So the receiving. So now I'm wondering if kickers that. a kick a line drive yeah. opposite of the 
make it bounce and go out of the end zone, you get it on the 20, or does that return guy make damn sure he catches it? Now, he, here's another thing that happens if this proposal is passed. I think it's expected to pass. Um, so you can still do an onside kick, but now you can't do a surprise onside kick anymore, Leroy. Right. If, right. if you, if you, you do an onside – Right, so pe bit. people would be lined up the way they line up for the old kickoff. So hey, Vlad, Vlad, yeah. I'm about to run a trick play. <laughs> I'm about to run a trick play by you your now? ass. I <laughs> hope you're ready. Get your head teams right. Here right. it comes. No more surprise onside kick. That right. stinks. You might as well say no flea flickers, no reverses. Yes, right. Like, listen. <laughs> If you ain't ready for everything, you should be penalized. Yeah. That's Simple true. as that. Well, I, for one, have had a lot of fun today. Uh, I will not be here tomorrow, but I will be here Friday. So tomorrow, I think the tadpole oh. is going to be back. Yep, and I'm and I'm out Friday, so. You're out Friday? I'm going to miss you. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, I got to tell Marcos to show up because I want to do some spring break trivia on Friday. That's all I want. So, spring break trivia. Yeah. We'll have it. We'll have it just for you. We'll have it for you. Spring break. Yeah, because because like as much as we argued about, we didn't really argue. We had conversations because it's hard to argue about goats, right? Yeah. But we kind of talked our way through it. But Marcos did us a, a disservice by not for two hours actually by, by not by not one seating the goats and by having some of the goats squaring off like early it would be like if boston right. is it we had a situation where it would be like if boston played milwaukee in the first round right yeah yeah, yeah. well that's what's goats that's why you know there's some great goats Solana! it's terrible with brackets look at him Solana. why is Solana upset i don't know, I don't know. he got because the heat play got play a game tonight Oh, he's gonna be here all <laughs> day and all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we got the hockey crowder show coming your way next. I see my guy Solana is in the building. Hockey crowder is somewhere they're gonna be on when we come back. AM 560 sports WQAM. The number one sports edge.